if you were to know um, how much a label makes yeah. a year off of the albums that they sell, then you would have a range of how much, charge. How much the charge. you should yeah. Yeah. be getting back or Absolutely. how much to ask Absolutely. for. But when that's like a blind number, you don't, you don't see it, you don't know it, and you find out after the fact, then you're like, this is what you gave me? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, like a label, they're not rappers. Mm -hmm. They can't make money without, without the talent. That's right. right. Mm -hmm. Why cause the talent to suffer? I don't, that, 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 that never really equated cause to Because y'all don't, don't know no better. Right. No, I get it. I get it. That's the, it's the only answer. I understand answer. it. But then when somebody run up in the label with an AK or start breaking shit, I'm gonna call the cops. then they're looking, oh. Uh, no. I'm gonna, they don't call the cops. I, I, again. That AK has to be a lawsuit. Basically. Yeah. And yeah. an audit. Yeah. Everybody out there, listen, I don't know if you see me. If you're a recording artist of any stature, hmm. audit. This Smack rapper, smack. only smack rapper that you know is smack rappers. Got bars I can hang with the backpackers. Trap star, I don't hang with the backpackers. I'm in the hood with the work you heard, making fiends leave earth you heard. Got your baby mama thirst you heard. Feel the flow, nigga, throw it in reverse. This the way you need to surf you heard. Told Jim I need a bomb I could drop on you niggas. Bad boy, I'm never gonna stop for you niggas. I don't give a fuck who you got as the illest. I solidify my spot with gorillas. Now I'm rock with you niggas. To my old chick, she can hit me up, but she ain't getting no dick. I'm the type to act like I don't know shit. Let them think they getting no, but then I rearrange the whole script. Oh shit, back up on my focus for more chips. Came up with the scar faces, now with the sources. I don't fuck with All right. We back. My expert opinion, episode 85. 85. Bill Power. <laughs> I like this. I like this. We already started off right. Yeah. Um, yeah. We got uh, King Shaven, King's Elixir. If you've been watching the show, you already know this is the cheat code, man. It's the cheat code, bro. If you out there, you lonely, you ain't getting none. <laughs> Get this beard oil, I'm telling you. King Shaven, kingshavenproducts.com. Promo code hot for gang. Go pick them up. Like I said, the King's Seduction is my favorite, but the King's Elixir might be your favorite. So go check them out. Ah, I got, I got, you got a little fuzz. You oh, got a little fuzz. Right? I got a little fuzz, right? I gave you the good one, too. Oh, okay. Great one. Nice. All right. Um, real quick, I want to say this. Prayers, prayers go out to Haiti. Um, the situation that's going on over there is kind of crazy. There's about 10,000 refugees on the borders of Texas right now. So if you can, do your part. I'm sure there's a lot of people collecting donations to just support those people, all right? Ah, Mr. Mech, back in the building. Good, sir. How are you, sir? Bless this fuck. We got my man, Sean Bigger. Real quick. Happy birthday, sir. Good looking, man. Happy birthday, Thank sir. You. Happy birthday, sir. Thank you. Happy birthday. No doubt. You might want to look in there, man. Just, yeah, you know, look just in check there, it out. Ahead, just check ahead. it out. No doubt. You know what I'm saying? Oh, come on now. You already yeah, know, I know you my with glasses. The, with the eyewear. And you, and you showed up without nothing. Yeah, I need it. Exactly. You just took care of me. Bow, bow. <laughs> there we go. See, I beat the vine in these. There we go. There we go. Now we're back. That would have been crazy. Yep. This would have been the first episode y'all got to see his eyes. <laughs> it works wonders, trust me. I got my man Prez in the building. Y'all know wifey, stifey, spicy. Salute, brother. Brother Muhammad. Brother Muhammad. Moody. What it do, what it do. Tell him aid, tell him aid. Me, baby. Tell him aid lifestyle. That's right. right. Tell him aid lifestyle.com. Definitely check Hit it the out. the website. And today, 
Ah, uh, I know I've used the word legend a couple of times, but when I say it today, legend. I gotta go <laughs> legend. With the, with, you know what I mean? Ah, <laughs> uh, where do we begin? Queens. Um, Hopefully not in the beginning. Queens. Start with Queens. Far, Queens. Um, begins with Queens. Um, like the abstract. <laughs> oh. Legendary group, Tribe Called Quest. I think to date, probably the, I wouldn't say the fathers of conscious sound, but in the realms of, of the people who set the blueprint for so many other bigger artists. Mm. MC Love Child. Q <laughs> <laughs> tip is in the building. Let's go. Hey, MC Love Child. Some digging right there. Yeah, a little something. Little you know? something. What was up with that? Nah, that was like um, <laughs> you know, I was freshman and at Bertram and shit. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just one of those. Tags, it's, tags, you know what? The first rap name, but nah, with the with the with the um my girl at the time and shit. She was like, cause I was Jay Nice at the time. She was like, oh, I was Jay Red. A what? Yeah. Okay. And then and then um I had that I had Love Child in one of my my rhymes. <clears throat> She's like, oh Love Child, I like that. I said, you like that? Yeah, yeah, I like that. I like that. You know what I mean? So it's wow. stuck. You, know you could have been the first Drake, bro. Like I, I you kept love been. child. Like. Nah, nah. I, think <laughs> I know, right? It's funny speaking of um Drake that certified love boy, I had a, I did a joint like two years, like I'm called um Lover Boy Supreme, Shango. Mm. You know, Shango, the yeah. African and that's what that right. whole thing was about, you know, the prowess of the black man and shit. You know, it's funny when I saw that Drake shit. But anyway, yeah, MC Love Child. That was a long time ago. Wow. Damn. Fuck. That's what's up. Wow. Well, let's, <laughs> let, let, let's, let's keep going from there. Before uh, Tribe was like the, mm. the, the conscious run DMC. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's accurate. It's yeah. accurate. Listen, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> um. I wanted to know who came up with Can I Kick It? Yeah, that was me. So Can I Kick It was like, you know what I mean? Just like a, um, it was more based off of the beat. And it was just some shit back then in the time, niggas would be like, Yo, I'm about to go kick it with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go kick it with this one. You know what I'm saying? Right. Then it seemed like Kick It just became, as it was a New York kind of like slang, it just exploded and was just like everybody was saying kick it. I think yeah. you know what I mean? So but nobody we didn't really anticipate it, you know, I don't think any of the joints we anticipated, mm -hmm. especially off that first album, they're like it was more a lot of that first album was more like stuff that I had done, demos I had done when I was like fifteen. Like uh, Bonita I did when I was fifteen and Bonita? Was yeah. that fifteen? Yeah. Wow. So <laughs> Like a lot of that. We're definitely gonna get to that. Yeah. <laughs> definitely gonna get to that. Yeah, yeah, but you know, a lot of that was just like off of like concepts and shit. So, and that was a routine fight. Fight for now. Always. Like we, we used to always devise off of routines and shit. Right. Um. So yeah, that's that was kind of the genesis. That was like a. It was like a pre-routine that we put into the. Yeah. That we made into and the album. To this day, it's like. Anybody walk in, walk on stage anywhere, can I kick it? Yeah, she can. It's coming right out. Matter of fact, when Jay-Z did it. Yeah. On 22 mm -hmm. Tools. Yep. How did you feel? I loved it. it. A... Loved it. Yo, he stole my shit. Hell <laughs> no. Nah, and that love, especially Jay, because I've, I've known Jay from back, you know yeah. what I'm saying, before he was even, he was even rhyming, you know what I'm saying? So just to see him do that shit, that shit was crazy. Wow. You know what I mean? Um, so, so this group was formed, mm -hmm. legendary group, <clears throat> Rest in Peace Fife. Yes. Was formed in high school. Yep. Yep. And well, I started recording. Well, yeah, it's, it's kind of weird. Well, we, Fife and I was always, um, rhyming and shit and we was battling and shit. 
rallying niggas around the way, whatever. And then um, when we got into high school, he went to a different high school. I went to high school in the city and shit. And um, you know, I ain't have the DJ. So my 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 orientation in high school and shit, like you would go like the summer a little bit before it start and shit. So and my homeroom was Brother Jay from X Clan. Right. Wow. Yeah, he was in my homeroom and then Af, Af yeah, Af was in and Africa from the Jungle Bros was in there. So we started figuring out we was MCs, 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 whatever. And then um I was like, yeah, I need a DJ. He was like, yo, you need to fuck with Ali from, from Best Star. And then nigga, nice. He, he was DJ Flamboyant. Flamboyant. Oh, Flamboyant and Love Child. Love yeah, Let's yeah, go. yeah. Let's Here we go. go. <laughs> it sounds Yo, with Flamboyant, right. listen. With, Flam, right. with, Flam, with Flamboyant and Love Child. Flamboyant yeah. and Love Child. But, um, yeah, so I hooked up with him. He said he gave me a tape of his shit, cutting up a bunch of breaks. I said, let's go. Mm. Mm. That was freshman year. That was like the first. First semester of freshman year, so we're talking about 84. I said that real quiet. You see what I mean? Get down on me. But um, yeah, nah. That's high amazing. School. Freshman year, you already thinking about, you know, putting in that work to be yeah. an artist. Yeah, yeah. You said something that, of course, caught my attention. You used to battle? <laughs> yeah. Who yeah. used to battle? Who did we battle? I don't know. It was a, like back then, like on a... Five and I, we used to battle, we had this one battle with uh, these cats from the um, south side. Like, we was on the north side of Queens, the south side of the south side of So there was a, a mixtape that used to float around with um, Grandmaster Vic. I don't know if anybody ever, ever heard that Vic. shit back in the days. And it was um, rhyming over Rising to the Top. And it was Spank G. And it was this cat, Dodderot. And he was the second Dodderot or whatever. But we battled him. We was battling a bunch of them. We battled this nigga Tricky, like, on the trains I was riding. Yeah, when I would get on the train from the E train and transfer over to the A Fab and run the A train, we'd be having ciphers on the train. I'd be battling niggas for, for their bus pad, their train passes and shit like that. You know, you used to have the different yeah, color yeah, the, the, the different the color different joints. Color joints. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so, like, what were those battles like? It would usually be a nigga doing a beatbox, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And then niggas would just be going. You know, sometimes niggas will walk through the train, like through the car, and just like, who MC? You know what I'm saying? And niggas just, would just like start that. it. Yeah, that's how. Sometimes niggas would just already, a nigga and his boy or whatever, Crazy. they'd be going yeah. back and another MC see him, like, it was like, yo. it was like the movies. Yeah, it was like, yeah, it was just like, yo, I, I miss those days. It's, yeah. I remember those, you're like, yo, who rap? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And somebody step out. Yeah. And then it's like, okay. It was like one time in high school, right? Mm -hmm. It was in, uh, I must have been in like 11th grade by this time. So, um, where was that 11th year? It was like 11th, 11th grade. So I, at this time, I was just like, pretty much known on the, on the, in, in, from, from, cause our competing school was Norman Thomas, and it was mm -hmm. Murray Bertram. Yeah. So, and then there was the Smith Projects that was right over by Bertram because it was downtown by um, police headquarters. So, right. and riding the train. So, niggas knew what time it was for right. me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was rhyming and all that shit. So, my man from my school said, Yo, I'm, this nigga's going to get you. This nigga going to hear about you. We coming. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, you hear this that. nigga. My man Rob, we was in the lunchroom. We was seventh period. He was outside. He's like, yo, this nigga's outside. He said, where's Jay Nice? Jay Nice, where's Jay Nice? I was like, let's go. So everybody, you know how yeah, it is. Everybody you about to fight. Four of outside. Yeah, yeah, let's go. The classic shit. We go yeah. outside right in the front in this, in this A song. This old dirty bad. Where's Jay Nice at? <laughs> <laughs> old dirty bastard. Yeah. Wow. So we went in. I think Riz, RZA was there. RZA, that's how when I first met them. And so we battled and shit. But it's like I went first. So it was MC J Dice that is my title and shit. Oh. Niggas, oh, I don't fight or some shit. I can't remember. remember. Wow. I, I remember that opening line. Wow. I, remember that, I remember the opening line. And I remember, and then Dirty was like, all right, all right, 
I need my big box to go though. And it was really, <laughs> it was big box. Yeah, it was really and, 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 and he hit some shit. Um, a song unique. Um, I'm not gonna have it. Dag nabbit, you switch like a faggot. <laughs> Niggas just fall out like, oh shit. <laughs> Niggas fall out. I was like, I took the L. I took the you L. Took the L. Took the L. So took how the L. But, 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 but we just went one because after that, because we couldn't get through the first, yeah. his first yeah. shit. Because his style. Then I just, went off. Wow. They came back with some other shit. Niggas just dapped it up. Wow. We went down by the basketball court and shit. Yeah, took, Drank some fucking out. brass That's monkey. Right. Nah, 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 don't, don't try to brush it off. Because I remember what taking my first L was like. <laughs> nah, but it was it was funny because the nigga was funny. Funny. So you, everybody you was just So it wasn't it was like, benign. it wasn't venomous. Right. Because the, cause the, the, the nigga's boss was just so, oh, he was, doing, he was on that. Yeah. Early. Early. Early with that. How wow. bad can you feel losing to somebody who uses the line, dag nabbit? Dag nabbit. <laughs> dag nabbit. You can't feel bad if somebody says dag nabbit. And then we used to world. always see each other after. It just it was just blood. That, that's my nigga right there. Wow. You know, R.I.P. That piece. was that's a piece. That was heavy, man. Like you know what I'm saying? Just thinking about that shit. Like the the all of that added to what you know tribe was to me. Mm. You know all of all of those early experiences and shit and doing it because we wasn't really looking at it like. We was trying to get a deal. We just wanted to rock parties. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then after a while, we, we started to get into the idea that we could really do something. Um, my sister used to uh, fuck around with this dude from the Bronx, Skeff Anselm. And he was Jazzy J's right hand man on his own nation. So when we was. It must have been, yeah, about 16. This dude who was in band named Ant, he was like A Boogie from the, we call, used to call him A Boogie, Boogie. so funny. Wow, and he's from the Bronx. But he was from the Bronx, Anton, he was a drummer. And we had him as a drummer. I had a little side money, you know, whatever, whatever. So we booked out a little joint um, in Manhattan, a rehearsal joint, and we set up on the weekends and shit. And we go in there, practice, throw the drums what, what in there. What grade is this again? This was 10th grade. 10th grade. Wow. So we were we were very this is, this is life without TV and smartphone. Yeah, no, but this well, we not were, TV, but we were very know. driven. We were very driven. We were yeah. very serious about the shit. You know what I'm saying? Because we saw what it was, because running them and, and L were they were from our neighbor, they were right up the block. Right. We say Devon Sounds is right up the block from where Ali lived. So it was like reality for did, us. Did you ever try to get the like, yo, I'm gonna rap for them? Yeah, it was <laughs> Yo, nigga. Yeah, I need to hear this. Yo, boom, so boom. <laughs> you know how you see like some, some old, some cap shit. You get the fucking flyers cap. It's like, yo, this one's gonna be there on the flyer. You see the yeah. flyer, and the yeah. nigga had the old picture, of the nigga with bottles on the shit. Yeah, it's like get the ladies Man, free, all that type right. shit. Yeah, yeah. Shit had one of them shits. So niggas was saying run was gonna be there. This is like, I'm like. I must have been about, I must have been about, yeah, I was like 14. So I was like, yeah, oh shit, run. And they was like, they had these other niggas, you know, a couple of local, ni local niggas. Um, <clears throat> I forget the name of the, 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 the oh, it was uh, Mikey D, an LA posse from Queens. These are real Queens. Um, Johnny Quest and all these different early Queens MCs and shit was all on the fly and it said hosted by Run and they had Run with the picture like and the picture on the fly I was like yeah. oh that nigga's like saying yeah I'm gonna be there I'm like yeah, yeah I'm gonna pull up yeah that's what it was so yeah. I threw him on a fucking a deal went to the Ave got my Adidas shit my fresh white shit with the fucking with the black stripes with the black oh. I was doing it yeah you know what I'm saying I was like oh, I'm gonna see my moms so this dude I believe his name was Pookie I can't remember. I don't even want to say anything, but um, yeah, he was there. He was. I was like, "Yo, so there's gonna be like a little talent, something like." He's like, "Yeah, but you got to rhyme." I was like, "All right." He's like, "Hold on," picked up some shit. It's like cotton ball on the top of the shit. He starts with the alcohol and puts the joint in there. 
you got to rob. <laughs> He's fucking moking out right wow. there. And I'm like, <laughs> this, wow. nigga, this nigga smoking right here, be asking me to rob. And I was like, you know, I'm 14. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I'm looking at the nigga like, what? So I well, hit anything one you say got to be fire at that point. Yeah, but I was just like, <laughs> the, the stench from the crack cocaine yeah, that, was pretty much don't know. like burning my yeah. eyes. For those so. of you that don't know, crack cocaine, <laughs> crack cocaine <laughs> smells so like, kind of stopped, it like wet ass. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, like yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is a, a so an I was accurate like, description. Uh, nah, I'm, so that so that fractured that whole interaction. <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, wow. yeah, yeah. So having them around, you know, I used to see Jay driving the Mercedes and shit around the way. It was just like crazy. So we felt like it was attainable. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because they from so, the hood. Queens. Right there, boom, bow. Wow. You know Told you. I mean? Queens. But wait, wait, did, before we skip past this battle thing, you did you ever think that you was going to be battling or you would have any type of rap beef once you got in the industry? Nah. Because so, it was just what... I mean, it's like, uh, you know... The, the times bred, I mean, bred what was necessary, I felt. Once we got the deal, it was like, we were musicians. Like, because we was, I mean, we was deep in the shit, but I was always deep in the music. My pops had a huge record collection, was like a jazz dude and shit. Wow. So I was just always into the music, man, to be honest. It was like, when, when we did the group, I'm more, of, I didn't even look at other dudes really as competition. I was trying to be in competition with like Earth, Wind and & Fire and, Stevie Wonder and shit like that. That so, was your goal. That was our goal. Wow. That was our goal. Our goal was to try to like establish ourselves, like to come out. Cause you gotta remember when we came out, it was like PE, EPMD, mm -hmm. Rock Cam, G Rap, NWA. You know, they was all our contemporaries, and we was like, we gotta. First of all, we gotta be ourselves. And second of all, you know, we got to be able to musically be, have something that's to differentiate her. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, and back then you had to rhyme, you know what I'm saying? Like you had to be nice, like you couldn't just... Yeah, that was it. You know what I mean? Niggas was dropping 12 inches that was just fire. You had to really had the ability, you had to have the ability. You had to put the work in. I, I'm kind of missed the days. I, I used to have like a, a easy pass. Mm. Get around anybody. Right. All I had to do was rap. Right. So I would meet somebody. Mm -hmm. Yo, just, just listen to me rap. I'm like, yo, you nice. Come with us. You know what I mean? And right. automatically, like, that was just the vibe back then. Man. I kind of missed that. Yeah. Do you well, think you did it? Did. Stevie Wonder, Earth, Wind, and Fire, oh. becoming that for your era? Do you, do you, do you look at I yourself mean, that's like a, I mean, that, that was a high goal to set, right? But, I, I, yeah. I, you know, I think in a way we, we achieved that. I think in the way we achieved that because, um, and I, that's, that's not saying it in no ego shit, you know what I mean? Yeah. It just is what it is, you know right. what I mean? Like, we super blessed to be like, um, not only <clears throat> a part of the culture, but to help like really define some shit within the culture. Like, I, I still be having like, like Corday or Charles Major when I see Kendrick or, mm -hmm. You get that nigga. I feel like, bow. yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, 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 I appreciate yeah. it because they take what we did, mm -hmm. they take the root from on it, mm -hmm. and, and with it. You know, it's like I look at it like um, there's two sides essentially to the rap game. You got the the G shit, and then you got like the the higher learning shit or the conscious shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I feel like our shit was always the conscious, conscious like yeah. Yeah. artistic, creative, right. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Well, all you guys were in the mix together. Yeah, we was all in the mix together. The, the, and that's the, that's the ill shit about music, right? Because right. It, it, it brings what otherwise would be people who lived on opposite sides of the spectrum together. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And, that, and that's the wonderful shit. Our whole shit is community anyway, niggas. We like, 
Black, black people, we always just about family, community. If somebody go bad, you fucked up, uncle go bad, you may stop speaking to him for a year, but you know when Thanksgiving coming around, he back in. Back in. You, know, he he's like, Yo, I'm sorry. you know what I'm yeah, saying? Exactly. Like yeah. that's just who we are in our spirit, right. you know what I mean? That, that vibe. Yeah. So, so were you taking off guard when um, MC Hammer mm -hmm. took a shot at you? No, I mean, I was... It was funny at the time to me. Because, <laughs> no, not in a yeah. disrespectful way. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, um, what do you, what, what, I, because the, the rhyme was proper, what you say, hammer proper, rap is not pop. If you could call it that, then stop. So it was like he did, he was doing all these commercials. It was like a first mm. at the time. So that he was, was doing the line that he these, took offense to. Huh? That was a line that he took offense to. He took offense to that line. So. Um, and shouts out to Hammer. Anyway. Yeah, shout out to him. It was super cool. Um, so he took offense to that line because at the time, you know, there was like uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken commercials and Chevrolet commercials and Pepsi commercials. He was the first MC to ever have like a Pepsi commercial. It yeah. was huge. And then it was like, you. it was the first time I've, um, in hip hop where you saw we saw in real time somebody really being co-opted, you know what I mean? And I, you saw the corporate cling coming on. Right. And then all these people, you know, it was pop, they were calling him pop star, MC yeah. Hammer. I'm like, he got an MC in front of his name, y'all. Right. Mm -hmm. He's an MC. So I took it to the line and everything is proper. What you say, Hammer, proper, because he said it in a commercial, mm -hmm. right? right? And I said, rap is not pop if you call it that to stop, just because of how everybody was terming him as a pop artist. Instead of acknowledging. Yeah. He wasn't he was so, correct. he, wasn't so he took it to, it huh? He wasn't correcting them, though. Right. I'm sorry? He wasn't, he wasn't correcting, correcting them. them. When they right. called him a pop right. star, he just went with it. Yeah. That was part of the reason why. They was calling him a pop star, so that's why I was like, rap is not pop if you call that to stop. Like, mm -hmm. Like he's one of ours, right? You know what right. I'm saying? It was more like a your like, success belongs our, over on this side. Our shit, give us our, our shit. Props. Look, we put we had an album cover where we put all of our would be competition on the cover of our album, right? Because we were always under the belief that, you know, uh, this is a we came in as a crew. We leaving as a crew. I'm from the era, as you are, we from the era of posses. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And you move down, remember, I don't know, you know, back then in the day, you see like 50, 60 niggas coming down the street. That was your family, that was your crew when you was out, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I looked at everybody, and I guess, you know, because I was viewing it from that, you know, that they was calling him the pop artist and he was doing all this shit. You know, I guess, you know, in, this, in, in the 16, I could have addressed it to make it succinctly clear that clear it wasn't that no shot at, at him. him right? Yeah. But, but what category would you have placed him in? Because you said there was G shit and then conscious. Well, at that point, I think he was like more of an entertain. Well, you, I guess there's an entertaining shit too, right? Right. Because you had, you know, at that heavy time, D. you had the young MCs, you had Heavy D, um, you know, Mo D, who's a nasty MC. Kid but and play. He was putting, huh? Kid and play. Kid, Kid and play. play. You know what I'm saying? Bob MC. Some more, you know, yeah. party shit. Yeah. Entertaining. You said that would cross. Entertaining. But then when I was see a lot of white people, pop, you know, on the news, pop star MC Hammer has sold out this sister. This, this. Pop star MC Hammer has a lucrative Pepsi deal. Pop star. I'm like, commercialize them. Stop trying to fucking whitewash that shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Commercial. But it, it's, in terms of that, is pop just a level? It's just a level. It's not yeah. a, it's a, pop music is a space that you should not want to live in, but you can visit. You mm. know what I mean? Right. Everybody has, a, has an opportunity to visit there. The fucking, the, the accoutrement of the, the pop space is lovely. You talking about like silk ottomans and <laughs> fucking 25 like feet ceilings and fucking stone tables is lovely. Some niggas stay there too fucking long and get cooked and can't come the fuck back. Wow. It's a place you visit, but you don't, don't want to live there. there. Wow. Some niggas 
live there be in trouble. You know what I mean? Mm. And then there's some people who actually, those motherfuckers who kind of started there and lived there, they're just weird. Uh, not weird. I wouldn't say that, but not them as people, but the music mm. they make, it's like they're, they're always trying to chase the pop trend to stay up in it. You right. know what I mean? It's, it's so, but it, there was a point where people said 50 Cent. Right. Was pop. See, that's what I mean. <laughs> Like, we, we laughing at because there's no way that's you know, what he's rapping people, about. Man, I remember yeah. Rolling Stones put this up. Uh, 50 Cent Masters, the Art of Violence, or something like that. It was a musical, it, but they threw violence in there as though the, like it was okay. he turned it into a musical yeah. form. Right. right. Crazy. Rather than just say he was a rapper. Right. right. You know, they, they, that, that, that's. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta own our na- We gotta own our narration of ourselves. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, and we also, we always, we always have to like um, uh, punch up the story or do punches on the story when people tell our story. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like a, 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 a somebody else running your Wikipedia. You always have to stay on it to make sure that. Nah, this is what it is. Da, 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 da. Or, you know, you'll see. They'll start saying 50 Cent is a pop artist. Mm-hmm. He's, hmm. he's the furthest thing from that. You know what I mean? So amazing. Well, back then, and getting your deal. Right. Shopping. Right. What was it like? I mean, can you describe one of the the best and worst meetings? Because uh, I know those A and R situations yeah. are always crazy. <laughs> well, well, we didn't have meetings. Well, I, I'll tell you what, what what our thing was was you had to send you had to send tapes out. Mm. So our first demo that we did, uh, we sent out to Next Plateau, Select, Tommy Boy. Dev Jam, um, and that first demo was the one I was people we worked on when we was in that studio in '85, and we sent that around. And didn't get, you know, any any nothing. <clears throat> right. Then um, the Jungle Brothers, <clears throat> who were at my school, um, recorded bragging and boasting and Jim Browski, which was the first single and shit. And they recorded that in 87. And Af did the beat and he would do it up at the crib um, in Brooklyn. And I'd be there. I remember when they recorded both of them. It was ill because Af, Africa from the Jungle Brothers was just so instrumental in my shit, like in terms of like, Cause he was touching. That was that was like he was my best friend, but he was like fucking with Mike G. He was moving around a little bit before I was. Then eventually I started going and fucking around with him and shit. But I'd be getting all the beats and shit. We'd be going digging and shit. And to watch him do that, you know, was just ill. I just picked it up like that because I was doing pause tapes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When he had like a. Um, yeah, like I think it was a gray Elysius, some shit like that machine. They used to throw the beats in there. For those who don't know, though, can you break down what a pause tape is? Um, a pause tape is like, you know, you have your cassette and shit, and you, whatever shit that's going to be the source materials on your cassette, and you have a, it's a dual cassette. Mm. So you're playing, let's say you're playing, before I let you go. On the recording shit, you got the record on you to pause. And as soon as he goes, go, you unpause it, go, pause it, rewind the shit, then right before I let you go, (laughs) you got to do that a fucking hundred times to get one minute. You're making a beat with With two cassettes. Mm -hmm. Wow. Sampling. Then you take that off. Mm You put that on this the, before Gemini's. Yeah, and then you put it yeah. on the other tape. Tape, and you play that back, mm-hmm. and then you got, and then you put some shit like. But actually, you have that going. You take that tape, you play that, then you record it again. Then you put another source on the other shit with the source that you just made of that. <laughs> and, 
crazy. It's like a, a just circle. Kept doing. So How we was long doing that? would it take, take to it's make? so long, bro. It's so long. Can you imagine like this? Like, that's crazy. That it takes a long time to explain so, it. So, <laughs> Let alone to do it, like just explain. Like, yeah. I used, you know what? I used to still just for, for sh- just to fuck around. Like even after I was nice on the drum machines, I would still do parts just to fuck, just to keep the sharp, shit. keep right. the, you know what I mean? Right. The edit shit sharp. Wow. But um, doing those first demos, and then being on that first Jungle Brothers album, like those were the first. That was the, that was my first time like in the studio. It was the first time for the mix. Like I was on the mix for um, Straight Out the Jungle. I remember Red Alert walking in, and I was like, I already seen Red at the quarters and the square and all that shit. Right. And to see him walk in the studio, and I'm like, damn, we sitting down. He said, All right, we're gonna do this mix. Um, what did it? Q-tip. Okay, you hold these mixers, and when I say raise it, you raise it, and then when you pop this out, you pop it, let me show you. And he took his time and showed me, like, what the, how to actually sit on a board and mix. Wow. And it was me, Africa, and Red Alert, and we mixed straight out the jungle and then did the promo and shit, and Red was playing the promo. Like, when you -hmm. you get your your promos played by Red Alert, Mm -hmm. and he was playing our shit, that eh? behind down Lennox, you hear that shit fucking ringing off the fucking builders, yeah, B? Yeah. It's nothing like that, nigga. That shit is amazing. Oh, that shit was just, <laughs> I was like, oh, <laughs> well, you see, Straight flashback. He's there, right? going nothing like yeah, that. Yeah, that shit was just amazing, man. But this was still before the deal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was before, this was 88. So this was before the deal, and he was playing the promo and shit. And then we got the deal, but it wasn't meetings because we kind of got ushered in through, because Jungle was signed. Right. And then um, they met up with Dayla, and we all met up with Dayla, and we got on their mm-hmm. shit, and we formed that Native Tongue shit. So at that time, niggas, by that time, niggas was like, who's next up? With the Jungle right. Quest? Yeah. Tribal who's Quest is next? Yeah. Right. We had a bit more between Dev Jam and Jive and Geffen. Um, Geffen actually paid for our professional demo, the first, because we had do, done the home shit, and then right. when everybody was asking for us and shit, Geffen was the first one talking to us. And this like, is after Red Alert was. This is after, yeah, this yeah. is after now. So this is after, um, this is af- right after um, Three Feet High and Rising came out. Because mm. mm. then they heard me on there and shit, and I did a beat on there. Um, so when Geffen we the first was the first meeting we had, they was like, you know, pay for the the demo to get done professionally and shit and they paid for it. And they turned the shit down after we did the demo, but then Dev Jam was in. And it came in between Dev Jam and Jive. And then we just went Jive. How much? At the time it was a lot, it was uh five hundred. And at that time, that was the most for like a new. Wow. New one. How many albums? It was a. Uh, it was a four four album deal. Four album deal. Yeah. yeah. That's, not That's not bad. And you are fresh out of high school. Yep. 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 I was doing. We was making all of them rounds. The gestation period was my whole high school up to like senior year and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like senior year, junior year. You know what I mean? Four albums is. What, four was albums it a hard decision good. between Jive that and Dev Jam? That's what I'm saying. Um, nah, well, Dev Jam dropped out after it got up to. Oh. After the they, numbers got they, up. They got to 350 together and then Jive just took to Jive 500. Where did you want to go? Dev Jam. Mm-hmm. Go that was just a house. Yeah, I mean, and I wasn't mad at Jive because they had Houdini and Karis one, but I gotta say, if I, I believe if we was on Def Jam, it would even be Ella, because oh, yeah. the way that they was marketing and pro- promoting shit, and Jive was more. When we got there, it was like, yo, these niggas is South African, <laughs> <laughs> and they fucking with me. <laughs> I used to be in there. I used to. I was wild. I used to walk through the record company. I was like. 
What's up, you fucking snakes? <laughs> <laughs> How you fucking guys doing? How's that a part time I take off? You know, I used to be a fucking what, smart what, ass. Was this and, then, a- and, then, and then, you know, I did, pardon me, but then I did the, uh, the uh, record company people are shady. And at the time, oh, you know, God. niggas was like, how could he say? Them niggas made t-shirts and jive, the record company cats, and was right. walking around the office wearing the shit. I was like, damn, these motherfuckers ain't got no fucking shit. They don't give a fuck. They ain't making no. money. They're like, Joe, we're pulling a t-shirt saying it was shady as long as we're taking all your money. <laughs> I was like, I just dissed all y'all niggas. I'll be dissing y'all niggas right. constantly. And they well, just was it the fuck. vibe or did you, did you feel like there was some things in your contract that you was like, oh, nah. Well, you got to understand, when we signed the contract, we was like 18, 19. So we were pretty much um, impressionable and really green. You know, mm-hmm. we ain't know the fuck all that shit, mechanical rates. And mm-hmm. They, some motherfuckers destroyed us, B. <laughs> like, we was getting so, dude, we just finally starting to rectify that deal from 1989. What? Damn, that's 30 years. It seemed so, like yeah. back then it was every, a lot of artists went through that at that time. Say that again, brother? It seemed like back then a lot of artists was going through that. It yeah. Was, it seemed yeah. like the money came in the game like right after y'all. You all yeah. started getting it's this, a dirty m- game. this mysterious money. It's a dirty game. But the old school artists, yeah, you know, they didn't seem to, you know. Yeah, we weren't, you know, I don't want to get too much into it because there's still some some things that's happening behind the scenes legally. Right. But I will say that, um, you know, they took advantage of it. There was, I, I will say this, there was, there were uh, conflicts of interest all around. Mm. Mm in terms of the legality of our deals with Jive. Conflicts well, did, on both did, sides. Did they give you a lawyer? Like, here, take our lawyer. He'll look no, 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 no. We got a lawyer through um, Red Alert. Okay. So Yeah, and it was like, it was... Was it explained good. to you four times? Yeah, it was explained, but, you know, it was a lawyer that was uh, Red Alert's manager who wound up being our lawyer. Then we had to like break out of that, and then we got a real legal firm because we, when we came out, like the shit was like gold and it was doing good, and yeah. So and then people were saying, "Hey, you know what are you doing?" Da da da. And we were looking at shit, and we had to get an account. He's like, "This is not right." So then we had to kind of clean house. By the time we got to uh, Low End Theory, mm. but um, yeah, man, it's it's it's. The business is really, uh, it's fucked up. This is still, still, it's crazy. Yeah, man. Damn, thirty years. But it was, was it the desire? Like, this is a, this is a chance. This is yeah, what, yeah. That's what it was. Dream. We're eighteen, nineteen. We like, fuck it. We signing this shit on the same you label with rapping. Houdini and fucking BDP. Mm-hmm. How bad Sign can it, it be? And then, and then y'all was the locks just walking around the office. <laughs> it's like, you know. But, you know, we we were blessed, man. We were so blessed to have um, <clears throat> you know, people fuck with us and come to the shows and shit. And we always had great performances. We we we, we worked hard. Right. You know what I'm saying? Despite anything, like we it was the studio. The rehearsal, fucking the shows on time, like we worked hard, you know what I'm saying? And we we used to we used to give a lot of groups the blues on the road too, you know, with the show shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because that was a that was also a part of it. Like that was the that came with it. So I think that those things help salvage what otherwise could have been just like a real bad situation. Bad yeah. See, I hear people say the the industry is shady nowadays, but it's always it's always it always comes from a place where they entered into situations where they were not knowledgeable. They neglected to go get the help. They signed a bunch of stuff they really had no business signing. And 
and now you're complaining about the thing you went into, went into willingly. And because you were under the impression that it was supposed to be a certain way, whether somebody gave you that impression or not, that would equal the shady thing to me. If I told you when you go outside, this Bentley is going to be yours, and you get out there and it's a Chrysler 300, okay, right. that's pretty shady. And all I can say to you is it looks the same, so there you go. Right. But I notice a lot of times where the, where the beef comes, an artist is saying, but this is shady, this is shady, y'all are snakes, y'all are this, y'all are that. Not speaking on your situation specifically, because I have no idea what those contracts look like. But nine times out of ten when I see today, it's because you thought that it was supposed to be fair. And I don't well, know. Well, shouldn't who... it be? No. Wait, 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 no, no, wait, 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 wait. Wait, no, 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 no. I was Hold about up. to answer the question. Wait, 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 but let me let me add on to contextualize it. Like, you're talking about something that in the fairness of an exchange. You know what I'm saying? Between two entities. Mm -hmm. if, if, if I make shit and I give it to you to sell it, mm -hmm. like, we, we, at its base, part, there should yeah. be a fair exchange. Is it my fault because you're shady and, you know what I'm saying, I'm coming and saying, yo, y'all supposed to be upright. And you're saying, no, we're not. What's the question? Like, should why? It? Yeah, should, like. No, 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 mm -hmm. it never, no, it never should. Okay. It never should because the, the nature of business has never been the nature of culture. It's right. never been the nature of family. It's never been the nature of anything that you would consider, anything you would consider where fairness should live. It's never been a place where fairness should live. Right. I've seen that starting from shake, like starting from the things that I saw coming up. I understood that the culture of business has nothing to do with being fair. It has nothing to do with the community and culture that you were a part of laying the foundation in and BDP, et cetera, et cetera. Like, that's I don't even think business is a culture. It, I think once you apply culture to a word, then there has to be principles it's, there are and morals there, applied there, to there, a culture. There are. There right. are. So, there but, are. Bi but there's a business, which, which there's a business <laughs> epitaph. No, not no. necessarily a culture. No, no. there's, there's I a mean, there's, there, there could be some subcultures, some things you do no, at your business. No, there's a culture. There's also but, morals, but they're, they're, they're direct of anything that's fair and even. I feel like that we as a society over the past few years, we start to like put too much sauce on certain words mm -hmm. that otherwise need to be sacred and you use, you know, when applicable. I think applying culture to business is doing them a fucking favor. The reason why, the reason you know why, I mean? the reason why, no, it's, it's just, it's a really fucked up culture. It's a culture of cut your throat, get more than you do, cheat you. Every, whoever, every business. And whoever, exactly. We're not just talking no, music. No, no, no. I'm talking about business, at, business at, on a whole. The goal is get more than you, walk out with more than well, I walked in with, you know what's the and idea? whoever mm. at the end of the day... Whoever has the most stuff wins. But you know what that is? That's called capitalism. Yes, it is. Shoot. Yeah. Because capital, if you look at that, that's an asset. Mm -hmm. Lies or lism, you know, you just the act of taking a, you know what I'm saying? You want to capitalize. So I, if you have the capital, I'm going to mm. try to capitalize on you and try mm. to get that. That's I'm a Farrakhan ball right there. It kind of <laughs> is. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I need don't, don't, think, don't think that I'm defending it. Don't think that I'm, I'm happy about it. Don't think like most. Yeah, of, I know, I know. Nah, most, of my, of most of my job as a consultant is walking people through what you need to be aware of right. walking up. And I can't tell you how many times I've repeated your specific bar to the, to the clients that I'm dealing with. The, industry rule number 4080. I say that shit like they should already know what I'm about to say next, and if they're initiated, they do. If they're not, then I have to finish the bar out. Mm -hmm. But, they, yo, but shouldn't it be like, the second you start telling me, shouldn't it? Shouldn't it? That's you telling me what your expectations are. And your expectations are not reality. Right. What, what you believe to be fair has nothing to do with what's about to happen. This isn't fair. You don't get what you deserve. You get what well, you but, can but, negotiate. But, 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 but because that, because that's, that's a, but, but because somebody <laughs> has that reality, that doesn't denote its its validity. It, it one hundred, it one hundred percent does it. But it's not the, going to validity. help you walking into this room. Why not? If you have, if, because, because if you're no, going, but wait, you're and the I'm only just, one just, in that just, room playing with just that. debate. I'm, I'm with you. Healthy debate here. Shoot. So if I'm walking into to try to go get the bag, I need to 
kowtow and walk in like, oh God, I better not look at myself like. No. You got to be assertive. You got to look at yourself you need, like you, what you have and what you're going in you, to you get need the bag. To, is, that, which is which is why I say which is why I then say, you're then you're already you're already walking in not getting it. But this this is why mm -hmm. I say you don't get what you deserve. You get you what, what you can, can negotiate. negotiate. I'm not telling you to walk in there with your head down because you, you've given your hand away. Yeah. You think what I mean? Yeah. You have to negotiate. So yeah. you need to know your worth. Yeah. And you need to play by the rules they play. In other words, I need to get more than what I'm worth. That's okay. what every Absolutely. artist is going to want to do walking Absolutely. in the room. Absolutely. If you've never generated $500,000, a half a million dollars in your lifetime from your music, if you've never generated that, then capitalism will tell you you're not worth that. Mm -hmm. But to be able to go in and still get that, you think what I mean? But you can't go in there expecting to get that walking in like, well, I'll take right. whatever y'all can give me. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not telling anybody. Yeah. I've never told anybody to do that. However, but a lot of people did it. You need to negotiate from mm -hmm. a space of you need you you need to negotiate from a space of what your actual worth is, yeah. what your plans are, and not what you think is fair. Yeah. Don't talk to me about fair. Fair doesn't exist in that room. It's what they can get out of you. They're not playing fair. If well, you this, walk in but, trying no, to play no, no, fair, no. That's See, but the, I agree with you to most of it, but fair is uh, is is weighed and judged because the 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 folly for not being fair are lawsuits. You know what I mean? Right. You, in, 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 in legal implications. Right. So there had there 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 are parameters that are set up even in business. If, if, so wait. One second, brother. You got but it. But the fairness is is measured by the contract, by right. what the deal is, by what the term is. Right. Mm -hmm. You are in breach of that. Mm -hmm. You'll pay the price for not being fair. You know what I'm saying? If I can outlast you in a courtroom, attorney-wise, because you don't have the money it takes to hire the kind of lawyer it needs, you need to go after me, and I have the kind of lawyers that can bury you, that's not fair. But in a business, from a business standpoint, I win because it costs me less to keep you away from well, me. Well, why is that? I mean, and I'm not telling you it's right. Well, I'm not, I'm not even, I'm not even I, 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 don't, I don't agree I with that. Why was there never a union to prevent these type of things? Great, great question. Great. It's the reason it's why still unions going are formed. Great question. Why great was there question. ever a union? Great because question. I think there needs to be one. The idea I, of a union would have been. Unheard of in that time. There was no union in rock and roll. Mm -hmm. There was no union in the beginning. Right. So as a people, one thing I think we're missing in this is that the responsibility is for us to be intellectually sound when we walk in the room. Right. Man. And when we're not intellectually sound, we'll be taken advantage of. And that was through the slave trade and through any kind of movement in history. And the only thing I've ever said is the only thing I'm saying in this is to expect anything less than that. Is naive. Oh, okay. Well, you yeah. got to manage your expectations. Obviously. But but they never do. You know what I'm saying? They right. never do. Yeah. Most most yeah. most you artists that saying. I deal with never do. You just, you just I, I, I want to like add label, to that. They're just like, oh, I got this person on here and this person on here. Yeah. You know what? I'm gonna just sign. Right. A lot of a lot of artists do that. Yeah, we was I naive. Do it. Still doing it up to this day. We were naive. This, this is a difference. This is crazy. When you're, you you call yourself an artist, you're not a businessman. Right. You're an artist. But you're now artist. looking to do business. Yeah, but, but well, artists going in to do business. From the perspective yeah. of an artist, this is what you... Does you not intellectually sound or be responsible for yourself? Is the question. No, it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't. But the temptation for an artist to achieve his dream, it could fog things. And when you walk into these rooms, somebody who's interested in putting up 500K, you're not thinking that... You're thinking these people want to invest in me. Mm -hmm. Not mm -hmm. that they want to rob me. Right. You feel there what I'm you saying? Go. That's there not, you go. That's not there the perception. That's right. And that's the shady that's right. part. That's, that's right. The that's the shady part. For them, for them, it's the same thing. They're investing 500000 not to make 500000 They're investing 500000 to see $5 million. And, and, and whether, what, what you see is relevant. You know, these, this same type of thing is going on in battle rap right now. Is that and a fact? that's funny. It's the industry. Funny. How because so? It, because Keep, you got to bring me up to speed, too, because I have All right. <laughs> if you were to know um, how much a label makes in yeah. a year off of the albums that they sell, then you would have a range of how much, how much the you yeah. should yeah. be getting back or Absolutely. how much to ask Absolutely. for. But when that's like a blind number, you don't 
you don't see it, you don't know it, and you find out after the fact, then you're like, this is what you gave me? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, a label, they're not rappers. Mm -hmm. They can't make money mm -hmm. without, without the talent. That's right. right. Mm -hmm. Why cause the talent to suffer? I don't, that, 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 that never really equated don't, to don't, me. Because y'all don't know no better. Right. No, I get it. Right. I get it. That's the, it's the only I answer. I understand it, but then when somebody run up in the label with an AK or start breaking shit, I'm gonna call the cops. then they're looking, oh. Uh, you know? They don't call the cops. I, I, again. That AK has to be a lawsuit. Basically. Yeah. And yeah. an audit. Yeah. Everybody out there, listen, I don't know if you see me. Yes, if you're a recording artist of any stature, hmm. audit. Audit. Is there a way to? Is there a way to? You know what? Right now, there's a situation going on with Karen Civil. Mm -hmm. Um, she's a publicist. She does promotions and stuff. Marketing. She's marketing, one marketing right. person now. And um, there are people saying they gave her a lot of money. Joyner Lucas, being one of them, said he gave her sixty thousand. So there's. Multiple artists, and he's one of them. And he's one of them. Uh -huh. Saying that this money was given, they don't know where it went. Like, is this just the nature? How do you, and from, from you being in the game for so long, what are the steps to stop that? How do you be cautious? I mean, the things that protect you in, in, in the field of business are contracts. Mm -hmm. Right? So... Um, you have to really make sure that you have a sound legal team knows what they're doing and even if you even if you don't know even if you don't have the legal parlance to speak all of the shit in a contract just say what it is from your own position yo i need I xyz this. i need this how do i get this so hopefully you get somebody right. who can sit there and really break it down for you and explain shit to you mm -hmm. and i'd say to every artist just a little bit of advice I don't give a fuck if a motherfucker got to explain it to you 10 times or 100 times. Don't ever leave a room nah, with nah, a lawyer man. until you get that moment where you go, ah, I get it. This you got to be able to have that one moment where you say, oh, okay, I get it, I get it, I get it. Right. Mm -hmm. Don't ever try to like force it like, I, yeah, I get it. And you don't really get it. Get you know it. how you be in that shit yeah, sometimes? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You got to be like, oh, okay. I don't give a fuck how stupid you may think people look at you as you always got to explain. But I, I would say that you'd have to have um, a sound legal team to help protect you in that way. You know Should what I mean? other artists play a role in this? Like you being a part of Native Tongues. Did you guys ever sit down and be like, well, I got this type of contract. What'd you get? What did you get? Yeah, we've done that. But that's why going back to the whole thing that y'all two were talking about, a union, I'd love to talk about that more because um, Master P, uh, I never, I never met that brother. I love him to death. Um, and if you see this, I would love to talk to you about it. He was talking about doing a, um, a union a couple times, mm -hmm. you know. It's weird, I think. What hinders that? Capitalism. Because we have a lot of brothers who have become capitalists. Mm. Um, I'm not saying that that's who they are, right. but they be become that, I guess. In, in, a, in a way of like a... Like, you know, like just a bit, like, you know, wanting to like probably... Oh, the not want to share yeah. the mm -hmm. the information, not even the wealth. And then wealth is really information, right? But share right. the information. Let me know where the, all the bodies are buried. Mm -hmm. When we go to do this deal overseas and we're doing streaming rights overseas, how do we get around these societies like ASCAP or BMI to get this or whatever? Whatever those little nuanced problems could be, mm -hmm. we got to be able to share it. I think that that's how we could be a, a, a union. I think that um, I think it's a I think it's a necessity, hmm. you know, in this um, business because what we culture. saw what happened with the whole streaming shit with hmm. record labels. Yeah. Record labels 
said basically, fuck the artists when Spotify mm -hmm. was coming along. And they made deals to cover their own asses with these streaming companies. Mm. You know what I mean? And then, and then they come up with, like Spotify for interest, for, 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 for example, has come up with like their own metric on how they pay out people on a, on a song based on a stream. Right. I don't know what the exact number, something like 4,000 or something streams equals one sale yeah, of a, a record. Of yeah, it's super small. Yeah. How does that Who happen? comes up with that metric? Mm -hmm. Right. Who decided that, that was the and thing? What, what is the blind number that we're not seeing? And this is across the board. You know, yeah, but you got to get $10 million to make $100? See all this? <laughs> you see what I mean? Yeah, because you got to wonder, like, what, why is this That's streaming crazy. service see able I mean? to give a different That's number than this happening. one? How is it being equated? That's why I don't be coming outside, man. That's why I don't be coming outside for you, my nigga, for real. You feel me? One important question I want to ask. So, going back to what we were dealing with with the record company. So, you know, like the people that you actually dealt with in the beginning when you was a kid, yeah. basically, that put you on. If you would have walked in the room, super smart, how you saying, with these, the, the law well, and all of that, and knowing the contract and knowing all right. of that would they had would you be q-tip well, right now no i wouldn't have signed that shit. but would you be would, Q -tip? would they have given you what you uh, your just do that's the question would they have signed you if you knew yeah. what you knew knew then what you know now no no exactly and that's the point i want to make so basically when you're dealing with business people they and they mind and they model it's a million rappers out here. Yeah. I could, I could take anybody, you know, any black boy that walk in that, you know, have lyrical ability, mm -hmm. and I could make him a Q-tip. I could make him a Jay-Z. I could make him this. Yeah. If but, you, but, but you no, walk, no, no, let me finish. No, let me finish. finish. In their mind, let me finish. All if right. you walk in, if you, if, you walk in there and you start dictating and telling me all of this stuff and you know all that. Come on, I don't got time. Yeah, I don't like got he, time for that. Yeah, it's like he know too much. You know what I'm saying? He know yeah, too much. I don't, yeah, want, I don't yeah, have get him time out of here. We, we spoke about and this. And that's in business all we, the way We spoke the about board. this they the, know very too much, first time, the very first time I was on this show. Crazy. We had this exact discussion. And I broke down exactly the reason why that happens, why it happens so often, and why they get away with it. it, it and it, it, it stems around the age gap so crazy and people act like they just don't see it. You're Interscope, he's Atlantic, I'm Def Jam, I'm Universal. It's gonna be super difficult for me to find the, the, a, a prolific artist with, with the streetwise acumen of a Jay-Z. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be super hard for me to find the talent level of a Common, an Andre 3000, a Q-Tip. How hard is it gonna be to find these guys? Damn near impossible to find generational talent right. Right. that makes something like Can I Kick It that reverberates decades after the song is over. Right. Super difficult to find those. Mm -hmm. But if I make the littles popular, these things that don't take a lot of lyrical skill to create, a lot of creativity Bar. to create, if I, if I make that popular, Mm. I can replace it every, every time it that, burns that, that, out. Yeah, as long and as I, as long right. as I keep time. as long as I keep them separated from where the knowledge is, from where the information is, from the people who can tell them how to do better. As long as I keep them away from them. Exactly so what do I do? Yo, anybody over anybody over 30 is corny. They wash, don't listen to them. They whack. You don't you you can't get mm. them. They old, they broke, they corny. Don't, 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 never mind what their bank accounts might actually look like. Never mind what the long money might actually look like. Fuck right. all that. I'm just going to tell you they're not hot, they're not popping, they wash, they're corny, stay away from them. You Q-Tip walks up to you and goes, bro, we need to talk. Master P walks up to Kodak Black and goes, yo, you need to let me have a look at these contracts because I know exactly what they're going to try to do to you. I don't want nobody old around me. Get from around me. I don't right. want to hear none of that They've old shit. They've already planted the, the triggers bullshit. of divisiveness. So, so, yeah. what, so what happens? What happens? Me as the label, you as the label, you. It, right. it, because I'm not interested in culture, mm. because I'm interested in a commodity, because I don't see hip-hop as a culture. I see it as a commodity. I see, it as, I see it as one big factory line where I could just create it, put it out, burn it out, replace and it, I'm repeat. And I'm looking for a formula that mm. I can repeat. Which is, because that's where the money is. Right. Now, see, here's, here's what I point out to my 
to the fellow execs that I always end up beefing with because I understand the way they think and I get it. I understand why it makes sense. If I'm going to be an exec, shout out to Viper Records, if I'm going to do that, I want my own era. And errors don't come from here today and going to my artists. They come from legacy level, generational level talents. And you can't jerk them. You, dig, you, can't, you can't treat them like you can replace them tomorrow because that's not, but it takes work to go find them. It takes work to break the formula because now it's going to take me extra money to put them past where the littles are and to keep them rocking. But they talk to me like it's impossible. But meanwhile, Kendrick Lamar is right there. Griselda, right there. For every one right Kendrick, there. there's 20 Lils. Exactly. Right. But that and those it. Lils keep the lights on. Right. Right. They but, keep the lights but, on. But mm. what's, again, the he, here's where we get to the morals of, here's where we get to the morals and values of the, of the culture of business or the culture of art. Mm. Right? Which, one, which side do you stand on? Do I want to keep the lights on and keep my money white, right? And, and I said white. Uh. Slip. Do I, want, do I want to keep my money rocking? Or do I want the kind of legacy that stands up and let the money come? What's your priority? But I think you only get those type of situations when someone who is actually part of the culture becomes the executive. What? It's thank not going to happen otherwise. Why do you think some of the more cultural culturally like driven at like artists that we've seen and some of the more the, the, the iller legacies that we've been able to witness where do you think they've come from like look at the violator family look at the look at the people that violator produced as a management team look at what the lighties did like look who we got from them mom deep q-tip buster rhymes missy elliott like bro disgusting everybody that came rolling out of there like not ll cool j like we got cultural shit right. non-stop whenever we've had our hands directly in our future whenever we've been able to treat it like a culture and not a commodity we've come out with the greatest shit ever yeah. and these are the names that get remembered yeah, look at, like, that's why when i talk to my when i talk to my clients you know, mm -hmm. my first thing is too. what kind of career do you want tell me what kind of career you want are, are you here to do this rap shit long enough to springboard you to something else or do you want a career and a legacy? Which one are you trying to build? Because those are two very separate Take paths. Legs, right. Take the legacy! <laughs> Take the legacy! The money wow. comes with legacy. You can, you can make money off with legacy. So, so how... Why is it Everything that this divide work. works? I'm sorry? Why Everything. is it that this divide You gotta build it works? brick by brick. Like what makes that... What, what, what makes that something that, that's even possible? Because in your era, you had a circle. You, you guys probably had the first chain of, of groups mm -hmm. or acts that work together. Mm -hmm. Like Native Tongues is, is kind of similar to what, the, what Southern rappers started doing when New York rappers started, mm -hmm. stopped doing it. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Right. What, what causes that I'm not messing with you or uh, the guys that make it this high and they just don't put anybody on and then there's other people that just come on? Mm, I, you know, I, I don't really think that that's, I don't really think that that's too much of an issue because I, I'm, I'm more of a creative, right? So sometimes the work just, and, and the, what you're doing just uh, dictates how you move, you know what I'm saying? Um, it's, it's really a tough question, but I, I'd say that um, for me, I can speak to me. Like the thing with tribe, I've always believed in trying to like extend. And if I see something, or someone doing something, I always try to like help. Of course, you right. know, like there's the bridge, you, you bridging it for them to, to get their shit off. You presenting an opportunity for yourself to be in business with somebody and both the potential is there. So right. I always believe in um, just, you know, if somebody got it, Work with them. Put them on. You Put know what I'm on. saying? Like people was looking at me like a two heads when I found Dilla. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, he's nice, and you put him. On. I was like, he's nice. What the fuck? You know? Because it was like, because I produce and produced. his shit was kind of coming out of my bag, and but he took what I did and just took it to the next level. Right. You know what I'm saying? R.I.P. Dilla. Yeah. 
Um, but that's what we should be doing, passing the baton. You know what I mean? And at, at all times and at all costs, because all that does is help feed you. And then they in turn, and then you in turn feed them. And it's like, right. you, you know, somebody who, um, you know, you, you help put on, eventually they'll stand on your shoulder and eventually you'll try to stand on their shoulder. Shoulders, yeah. That's the way it's supposed like, to be. You know what I mean? It's crazy. If I was yeah. to point out an example of that, um, two artists emerged under the time that I think Jay was the president of Def Jam, Rick Ross. Young Jeezy, mm -hmm. um, Kanye was also on the rise around that time. Um, these are the artists, when Jay said, I'm not rapping no more, those are the people whose songs he was on mm -hmm. that just kept the relevancy. Right. I, I just get confused on why is it that there's, there's such a divide? I don't, I don't get that. With the divide where though? Um, with artists that have been on, artists that have been through the industry, been through everything, like. Is it, does it have such a disdain that they don't look back and be like, yo, let me, let me save this guy. Let me not let the next in guy come in like that. In which case are you talking about? Is there anything specific? Oh, not, not, not in Jay-Z. specific? Too. I'd say in New York. In New York, I'd say we had like a good, almost two generations of rappers that never brought anybody else up. Really? He's not, he he's, not, he's, not, he's, not com he's not completely wrong, but there's a... The answer to the question is, today's rappers, and I can tell you from my own personal experience, I'll mm -hmm. be strictly anecdotal, but there's a level of entitlement that they approach with that turns a lot of people off. There's, there's, a, there's a need to fuck dudes, fuck, fuck that, like, I'm nice, put me on, and I'm special because I'm me. And I want this, this, that, and the third, and I deserve it because I'm me. And you can't find another nigga like me because I'm the illest because I'm me. That's what we just spoke but about. That's a, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's that's a shit ton about. of entitlement that I see the younger generation approach the OGs with, almost as if they're doing them a favor. But they're approaching with business. That's their, this that's is not that's, business. That's, that's You're like not business. worth anything. This right. is not that's business. A, that's how they approach you, it, though. You, you have, that's the artist. Look, 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 look at me, look at me. You have no worth on paper Right to approach me from a business standpoint, you you there's no investment no, that's how I can it, make. I'm just saying that's how the artist is this, actually approaching but th it. This this is why I'm giving you. I understand, right. but uh, most of that to me. He's telling you how the business always, is looking the most at. Of that I can to understand that. Always you know, sounds like ego. Like, right. You're coming at me from a place where you believe you're the greatest thing walking. You're nicer than right. this dude. You're nicer, and I get those. I have those meetings. Yo, Mac. I'm I'm nicer than Drake. Like right. I I think Kendrick is corny. Like I've heard right. shit like that to my face. Right. Meanwhile, you're requesting a budget that's six times more than anything you've generated with your art, and you're telling me that these people are corny. And somehow you've stepped to me as if you're entitled to my information, my resources, my contacts, my relationships, my acumen. You're entitled to all of that Crazy. just because you're you. And you don't want to have to do anything to earn it. And as soon as I hear that, talent be damned, you sound like a headache. It's crazy. You mm. just sound like a headache. And I have my own headaches that I can give myself <laughs> without taking yours on. Like, mm. I got my own burdens. I don't need mm. to sound Life yours. Like, sure. yeah. rock with your ego. Yo. Like, bro, that. And I hear <laughs> a lot of, when, I, when I'm, when I'm in, the, in the gap, in the space between these younger artists 25 and down, mm -hmm. and the grown-up artists, as I like to call them, like 30, 30 plus, who like it's more mature, been more polished, it. right? The idea. What did Q-Tip say to you just a few minutes ago? You see why I don't come out the house, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Imagine him coming out the house for a headache, to deal with an ego, to deal with yo, I'm nice. I'm, I see Man, what y'all did with that, all that is old that shit. Nice? Is he actually good? Is he actually good? And I'm making this argument because I was that, that gotta kid. That got to be proven. I was definitely that kid. And we were talking about this before the show started. Right. Um, Matthew, I had a meeting it? with Benny Anthony, and mm -hmm. he took an interest in my music, and he was working on LL's The Goat Project. And Shout out to LL. Oh, yeah. And I was very cocky because all I had to do was rap to people, and I could be in the studio with them. 
Mm-hmm. Foxy Brown, Benzino, whoever it was, if I rap to you, yo, you're nice. Come with me. So I kind of wore that. And of course, walking around the streets battling people and mm-hmm. all. So I asked him, yo, yo, let me get on the album. I'm not going to kill LL too bad. Oh, nah. <laughs> there you go. And all you got to do is rewind and go back to everything he was just saying. Right. Right. And that's right. what I got. Right, 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 right. But right. at the end of the day, yeah, but it's, it's out of like ignorance. Ignorance, it's ignorance not, it's pride, yeah. Yeah. hubris, ignorance. entitlement. Yeah. You're not entitled to anything. If you go by the motto, you don't get what you deserve, you get what you can negotiate. If you go by that, you'll understand you're not entitled to shit. This person who you, yo, how come you don't pull me back up? Motherfucker, who are you? Why should I? Like, why should I? But what if he come to the table with 100 million views? It's crazy. Like, that's a whole different Dude, situation. Then he's not asking you for no help. He's exactly. <laughs> Number one. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Number two, yeah. you got to hope that somebody didn't build a better mousetrap and those 100 million views didn't come because he named himself mm-hmm. after a bunch of popular rappers. Mm-hmm. I'm just on. Mm-hmm. See how fast mm-hmm. that happens? And, and those aren't fans. Mm-hmm. Those don't translate to fans. Beyonce has how many followers on Instagram? Right. Couple hundred million. I'm gonna start. How many records did How <laughs> many gotta, records did her last project sell? Everybody who my point is everybody who followed her didn't, didn't buy the album. She right. doesn't. Followers are not supporters. Right. Followers That's don't equal fans. Just because they nosy enough to look at your life and look at something that you've done doesn't mean that they want to support what you do. But That's followers represent fact. money. Right. It right. can be translated into bread. Yeah. A certain percentage of, of exactly. Those are like, mm-hmm. the, the numbers can be leveraged into something else. You right. know what I mean? Like the fact that you have that many eyes on something. Kevin Hart, from what I understand, does it all the time. He lever his Instagram is a whole separate body. If you want him to advertise the movie that he's in and use his Instagram to do it, that's an entirely separate conversation. If you want him to use his Instagram, that's a whole different thing. But that's leveraging the numbers. Mm-hmm. You think what I'm saying? But for for a kid coming out of the studio with the best lyrics ever, the best lyrics ever, who doesn't feel, who feels as if their talent justifies their approach. Nah, nah, that approach still got to be right. And then, and I'm not, I'm not saying that there aren't older artists who just, you know, fuck these young kids, blah, 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 blah. I've, I've heard that shit too. I've heard that too. Just, this, this ain't music, this is this, this is that. I've heard all that too. Right. I'm not saying one side is more right than the other, but the question was posed as to why there's a gap, why there's a divide. I can definitely speak cosines. from seeing both sides. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I, I see how you what, approach. What happened to the cosines? They they became more headache than they were. Who was the last person to lock's cosign? Jay Hood. What happened with Jay Hood? He felt like he deserved more than he was getting. Next thing you know, he's dog walking the locks chain down the block behind him. The locks are thinking to themselves, I did not have to deal. I, I could have just kept my mouth shut. I didn't True. have to put up with this. True, but that doesn't mean that's going to be everybody. Of course not. And I'm, I'm, but with but the have locks, you noticed, like, throughout the years, there haven't would, been see, a lot of cosigns? Seeing that as an example, would you? Like, <laughs> if you saw that no, happen... That, but that's not the only example. I could look at a... I remember Video Music Box back in the day. Um, they did a whole special on Nas. Before I heard one record. Right. And I saw all the other rappers that I love talking about him. Mm-hmm. And that cosign alone was like, the moment I heard him for the first time, I was like, I see it. I believe. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, we don't see a lot of that anymore. The, the, and the, the, the culture, the culture has not, the culture, the way we, the way we do things. Uh, the, the people who are involved now are different from what they were back then. Like, he produced on that album. It was a whole different vibe back then. Like, now? So, are there any artists you would co-sign right now? Hmm. Sure. I mean, but I've, I've co-signed some artists that are out now. Well, I'll give you an example. Um, this one artist, so, like, Crazy spit, like just lyrical shit delivery. So I had my assistant, you know, get a number um, to the management. And it was happened to be where she lived, right? So 
we call the house, um, and her mom's on the phone. I'm talking to her mom. I'm like, yo, I saw your daughter. She's incredible. I would love to, like, I have a little situation at Columbia. At the time, I had a, um, and I'm, I'm on Dev Jam. Well, I'm not on him. I'm on uh, Republic now. Right. But I had a thing with Dev Jam with Paul, um, and I had a little, like, kind of insignia deal at Columbia with Ron Perry. Um, so I said, so I'm signing artists up at Columbia. I want to fly y'all in. So I flew her and her mom in, her team in. I had to lace the Columbia shit. You walk into there, her pictures up, her videos playing. The head of the company wasn't the head of the company wasn't there. Ron Perry, he was, I guess, detained. Mm -hmm. But we took the meeting anyway. And so I gave it to the dude. And this is like a cult. This is me. Like prior, my cosigns was what uh, Dilla, uh, Nas. I had um, what did I say? I was telling all. Uh, I put Russell Russell Simmons in the morning. Oh no, I actually Red Man. I had the I had heard the shit. And I told Russell, Yo, you need to fucking sign. No Eric and them boy, you need to do that. I had to push the nigga over to do it. A few things. So I've. Done it a few times. So this one in particular, so we sitting at the meeting, it's great. The dude comes back. Yeah, we saw the views. You know, she's good. We saw the views and everything, and it was whatever. We could just give her like 30,000 or some shit. I'm just throwing a number out there, but it was menial like that. Right. I'm like, yo, dog, she she paid all of that shit for her, for her videos and her album and all that. Like, what are you, just say you don't want to fucking sign up, B. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't fucking embarrass me like that, like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, we're gonna pass. I was like, all right. So I took it to Def Jam, much smoother meeting, but the same thing happened. And I was like, I can't, do, you know. I guess the cosign is not working anymore, you know. And she wound up being Megan The Stallion. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. So but that's my but that's my heart, you know what I'm saying? Because wow. I had a whole that's shit for her. Crazy. I was like, yo, we're gonna do the sex shit, then we're gonna get in the MC. I was gonna take up the flex that she could run. Yeah. I seen mm -hmm. the and her mom's was an MC, God bless her soul, who passed. Mm -hmm. Her mom's was so sweet. Her mom's was an MC from Houston. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Um, so when we was chilling, she was like, What? I was uh, I was telling you, oh, you better sit that MC light, you better get your balls up. He's like, Ma, please, like to see them together was I was like, I'll fuck with her, man, you know what I'm saying? But the cosign is is kind of flimsy now because they rely on data. Mm. Which is my point of bringing that up. Because Ron Perry was like, Well, we looked at her, her views and we looked at her YouTube and her you know, we just mm. feel like we can give her this. I'm like, don't fucking embarrass, like, what the fuck? You right. know what I mean? So it's, it's, it's just so I said, don't you see who she is? Right. Yo, I said, yo, she is going to be the wave. I was like, yo, what the fuck is wrong with you? So and is there ever a callback? Like, yo, you remember that girl that I brought up Nigga, there? you know I'll get her. <laughs> the time. Are you crazy, nigga? Give him the blues. Y'all be sending a nigga Ron Perry shit on her or the bucket, the cover of shit, Grammyed out and shit. That's I'm crazy. always hitting them with that. Is it like, you look, know, I should have listened. Yeah, yeah. But they're going to respect the next time, though. It didn't take her very long to blow up. Yeah, nah, yeah. nah. We brought her up there and we was hyped. We was doing our thing before we even brought her to New York. We was like, move. Yo, it's so different. What do you think? I was like, that's it. Yeah, man. That's it. So, we thought it was gonna be on. Yeah, because because taste now is being rivaled with numbers and and, da and data. Muddled. Right. Yeah. That that's why the cosign is not as strong because they rather see because you, if you got shit out, numbers. they'll look and see how you doing on Spotify. How what many did I things you got? You know well, what I'm saying? Well, if, if, it's, if it's a formula being applied, and I've heard this a couple of times, is it true that all it takes? Well, from what there was a number thrown out there. It takes two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to make a hit record. I don't think that's the case. There's it may hit take that him. specific to, person two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to do what he's what what his method is to break it. That's off. not true. 
No, I'm, I'm saying it may take that. No, I'm, I'm saying yeah. it doesn't take two hundred fifty thousand yeah, to make right. a hit. Right. No, I'm agreeing with yeah. you. I'm mm-hmm. saying if this if if this is the number that that person gave you, then it may take him specifically for him. Yeah. Right. Exactly, or her. I've it heard may ninety. Take, it it may take them ninety. It may take you less. Might take me. Little more might you know what I mean? Like, but but there is a number. There's an underline, and like you're not gonna have a hit record. You're just not gonna put out a record, and it's just gonna catch fire, and everybody's gonna play it. Right? Is that where the industry is now? Well, you know, it's it, it like what a number wall that is. of people just standing there, like, I, if you want to get over here. I mean, this you got it's not. You know what? I think the greasing of the palm thing, like that kind of nefarious. Dealing says kind of like subside. I mean, there's still ways that people do that. It's still. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying it's non-existent, but I, I think that um, it, it, it really comes down to the content of the record, the timing, also who's your team, who's putting it out, how creative and inventive your team is in the rollout, and like how good the work is. Like if, if it, it really comes down to the content, right? Like but- if you got something that's fire. You're starting. You're batting. You're batting 300 right now. Like mm-hmm. a like a. Now, if you got the right team, what? now you're going up. To, you're starting to bat 400. You know right. what I mean? But so, is, is there? You have to put in this amount of money, at least, to move your record. I see. I'm not. I don't. I I I don't think that that's. It's 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 all it's all relative. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. And, and this is me just spinning the block, going yeah. back to this Karen Civil thing. Why would an artist feel like he has to give her that much money? Because That's of good. you know how she's built the fan base, you know who the audience is, how she, the 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 extra relations that she has to get said artists into this arena in Vegas or this space in radio station in Seattle or you know this you know front page thing on this blog thing you know what I mean she has connections so you're paying her you know to help put shine and light and mm-hmm. marketability on that project you know what I'm saying right. now that's also where a lot of the you know the dubious dealings goes down because you sign somebody over a check and they say okay but they what they expect to get back is a report to see how the record or analytics albums yes yeah mm-hmm. to gauge it you know what i mean does that happen depends on who you do the deal with yeah some people are going to provide some people those provide you that. I, I do some people do so when he said depends on who your team is my 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 marketing person may have direct ties to the person we really need to push this record. Mm-hmm. His mm-hmm. marketing person Might be may have people. a tie through a tie through, through a, a tie, tie through a tie. And everybody's and, and every just tie taking a little off top. equals mm-hmm. more money. Right. So my, my 20 bands to get from point A to point B will cost me 20 bands to get from here to there. For this person, 20 bands, <laughs> you know, yeah. it may be 40, 50. Like it, if you like me as a person, if me and you are cool and I come to you and say, man, if there's a show over here for one of my homeboys, I'd really like you to pull up. I know you charge 30. I got, I got 15 and the night of I can get another five so I can do 20 if you could just, you know. Throw in the bottle of Henny. See how fast that happened? Now, let me be a dude you don't like. Let me be a dude who pushed past you and never said sorry or, or insulted your wife or in some roundabout way and was real brash and arrogant about it. And no. I come to you with the exact same setup. Nah. nah. Because you can afford the pass on the bag in total, because you don't need the money, nah, I'm going to need, need like 35. I'm going to need like 40. It's different. Yeah. You dig what I mean? I, I don't have to... I don't have to pay money. I don't have to jump through a bunch of hoops, thank God, a bunch of years in my career, to get him on the phone. You think what I'm saying? I, I, I can call iconic-ass dude 
and run down some things to him, put, put him in position for some things that may come my way. You dig what I mean? Like, right. hey, Q, this person is looking for X, Y, Z, A, B, and C. Let me know what you want to do and get out the way of it. I don't have to, but for somebody else, that could be like six, seven months work. You don't come out the house. You can't even... You can't go to the club. You can't go to the club. He's always gonna be at. You know, and then offer him his favorite drink and then start a relationship. If you if you another battle rapper, you might not get a sixteen from Q Tip, like I did. You know what I'm saying? It just might not happen for you. You know, it's just, it's just about who you are. You know what I'm saying? But I, I, I do want to. I do want to kind of close that business segment because I feel like it puts everybody on edge. Like. This is the the downside. (laughs) This is the downside. And if you are an artist, um, you know, creating music is about spreading a feeling. And there's one feeling that when that spreads, it's a hit. And that's love. So show love. Show love. It's the most powerful shit. I got a verse from from a Grammy winning artist. Those moments, right, for me are like, I can't believe it. Mm-hmm. He said, "Yeah, because you're on the phone, like, yo, so um, would you do a song with me? <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> what's he gonna say? I'm gonna get this guy like, oh, hell yeah, yeah, just send a beat over. Like, that's that's <laughs> amazing. But you've worked with so many huge artists, mm. and your second." Love, I, I don't know, rap or where it is now. Mm-hmm. Engineering, producing, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. creating, mm-hmm. The, the, the behind the scenes, mm-hmm. sitting in the studio. Mm-hmm. I got stories. Go. Hey, hey that, that's what I want. I, want I, got, I, got, I got stories. Bro. Um, what, is, what are like some of the biggest moments of creating a record for you? Like you're in the studio, like there's a, a, a multi million dollar, a million selling artists over here, there's a, a producer who's got like 70 Grammys over here, and all of you guys are like working together. What is that like? Ah, uh, man, it's great. It's such because, I mean, the studio is my favorite place. I love, I love, love it. Like I never, I've been doing it since I've been 16, 15, you know, making music in right. the site. It's just always something new. You know what I mean? It's always like, I look at, I look at a lot of the like, Movements and the ways is great challenges too, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, all of it is just like when you're in with your, the people and you're working on producing something or you give somebody a verse, it's just the best feeling. I love that shit. You got any stories? You got any? About like artists I've worked with? Yeah, or a song that you, That's, that that you I, worked on and it was like, like I know you, you, you work with Kanye. You mm-hmm. with, mm-hmm. Is there ever a time you mix something? Or he mixes something, you're like, no, no, you guys argue over it. Or- yeah. I mean, the Kanye sessions were always great, you know what I'm saying? Like, he was the type of dude that, like, I said it one time in an interview, if you coming in delivering pizza and he got a beat up, he's going to ask you, what you think? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, he's always interested in what everybody else thinks about his shit. So those were always great conversations. And those were great sessions working on that shit and Watch the Throne and... You know, sitting with Jay and then the Mercer and shit. And like, I remember when he said, You run up on Yeezy the, the wrong way, I might hurt Mer- you. Like, yeah. um, I forget Bro Bro's name, he just passed. You know, I forget his name, damn. But he ran up on Ye. Like, Yo, I need you to do da da da. He was kind of like, A little off. Yeah. And Jay was like, Yo, talk, what we, you re- really? Like, he was like, And his security, he was like, Nah, 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 nah. You, you fucking play it. Like, he screamed on a nigga. Like, he was about to really, you know what I mean? <laughs> Next couple nights, you know, because he don't write, you know, he was like, run up on you, you the wrong way, you know, live right. from the Mercer, run up on you, run away, yeah, I might man, hurt you, came yeah. from that shit. So I remember wow. we, was com- we was coming out here like two in the morning, and, and Duke ran up on Ye. Um, but, uh, shit. You know, working with, uh, Fucking um, damn, bro! It's just so much shit. Work, well, working with Whitney was great. Whitney, with Whitney Houston. Oh, I P. That was that you was know, an experience. No Tupac. Huh? Everybody want to know Tupac. Yeah, 
Everybody want to know Tupac. Oh, well, Tupac? Tupac? Oh, yeah, but we never worked as that. That was my man, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But um, we never Tupac. worked in the studio, but we worked on that movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah but yeah, um, yeah. but the Whitney shit was great. Um, just working with her, watching us sing. Same thing with Mariah, like working with Mariah those times, like those were great experiences. Stevie, working with Steve, working with Prince was crazy. That was pretty crazy. That was crazy. Like just, he just was just cut and dry in the studio. He just knew what he wanted. He was efficient. Like, you know. Who would you say is the, the, the most, well, you just named Prince. I can't really go any further than that. <laughs> um, in creating these hits, mm. is there a, uh, a mission when you walk into that studio? Um, I think the mission always is just to just be fresh. I'm just from that era where we was like, and fall, we, like, we was just like, <laughs> that's, that's the era, you know what I mean? Yeah. I just want to be fresh, you know what I'm saying? Like that was the whole thing, like when I made beats sometimes, I'm like, how would Shorty react to it? You know what I mean? Like, how, what's she gonna say? How's yeah. she gonna move to this? Is she gonna be like, I don't know, I don't like this. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I always try to keep that, I, I keep that like in the shit that, that, that I do, you know what I mean? But um, it's, I just keep it close to, it, to the essence, man. Just staying fresh and fly in New York, you know what I mean? Like, just, you just wanna, and you always wanna come out, break out little something niggas they won't ever see. When you're right? in the studio, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it, so when you're doing the beats, you always wanna just have a little unique, shit with it you know what i mean so buster called you uh, i just want to get your reaction to this buster said how how much you had discovered so many people in your time and how many people you had put on and how like production wise he mm. called you the west the east coast dr dre he said it had you been signing people mm. to your own joint producing them you would be doc you would be considered dr dre i turned down a lot of shit foolishly early so I had an opportunity to be that, but um, I don't know, man. I was just doing some, I just, I, I don't think I was ready for mm. it, you know what I mean? I thought I was ready, but I, I don't know. I just was in a different headspace. I could have had that shit. I could have had Buzz. Yo, I had Raekwon's demo. I had, I had the fucking the purple tape demo. I took it to Sylvia Rome. And she's like, I already got a Wu-Tang member. I got ODB. You know what I mean? I took it to... I had Erica, I had a few things that I could have did. Did you just say Busta, Erica Badu, Raekwon, the chef? Well, yeah. I had Raekwon's first demo. Yeah. Meg the Stallion. The, 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 for the purple. Well, Megan the Stallion, Stallion, yeah. This like, can we add Mob Deep to that? Red Man. No, probably not Mob Deep. No, probably not. You said uh, but Red they were Man. Already a, Red Man. But I heard the Red Man demo. I didn't have it, but I heard it. Yeah, but you could have went and got it and had you Russell. not told somebody else to go get it. You could have. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Had you been headhunting, you could have just went and got that on your... I'm hearing the shapings yeah. of uh, East Coast Dr. Dre. You know, it's so funny, nah, but you know, I, I love Dre too, because I, that's one. But we've been speaking a lot over the past couple of years. He and I, well, over the last pandemic thing. Um, so it's funny when you say, and says somebody else was saying that. I forget who, but this is Buster's thing. Not this, like this no, I heard somebody. Some, yeah, but it's like um, Dre is somebody that. Um, you know, that's the big bro, but he's somebody that I've always had a volley with. You know what I mean? Mm. So when they when they came out with um, Straight Out of the Compton and shit, we was in LA, we had a show. We actually had a show in Compton with KRS. And I remember um, being out there, hearing niggas always running around rocking that shit. And I asked one of the dudes who was there, yo, what's everybody seeing me playing this fucking? Shit that I hear running by. And the next time I heard a car run by play, I was like, yeah, yeah, what's that? What's that? He said, oh, that's that NWA shit. The NWA. So me and Ali was like, we gotta get it. So we got the fucking cassette, flew back home. We used to be pushing the Ali's um, green beamer all over the city, <laughs> blasting that shit. Yeah. We felt like we was the first niggas in New York, York playing that it. shit. Yeah. Yeah. Some niggas so then boom, the yeah. Uh, so then I was like, yo, crazy. so one night was, I was like, yo, we gotta make our shit. The next shit, we gotta get this kind of sound. So I, I started with Low End Theory off of that shit. 
Wow. So Dre goes through all that shit he goes through. You know what I mean? So Dr. Dre inspired. Low end theory. So boom. When he was making a chronic, him and Warren, them niggas was stay listening to low end theory. Low end theory. Low end theory. So when he made the chronic, he was like, yeah, I, I got to get some shit like that. So, and we share that story every time we talk. Like, it seemed like, you know what I mean? So we have a great vibe. Like, that, that's the bro. That's the one dude. You know, I love Marley, I love Large, I love Pete, love Dilla, love Preem, like niggas is nice, Pharrell, Tim, the list goes on. But just like era connection, like just like like a real kind of low key competition, but I'm not watching. really watching, listening, yeah. inspired. Yeah. The guy, you know, that, that that's 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 my like guy that Sounds we go like, like this with. Like a versus to me. That's how I was about to Nah, I'm, I'm not doing yeah. that. <laughs> you know what? Like the verses. Verses. I don't ever do a verse. Nah, 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 nah. Oh. Because I, I, like, <laughs> I'm a battler. I told, I told Swiss, I was like, when he first came up with this shit, and that's my bro, love Swiss. I, was, I told him, I was like, yo, man, this is a pissing contest. He said, what you mean? I was like, you put niggas' catalogs versus niggas' catalogs, that shit is a very subjective conversation. I don't know how much of a battle that is. Right. But if you take the 20 songs from this guy and the 20 songs from this guy and you run them back, it is great for the culture. I think what it, this is predates the COVID. Right, the before, first time, if you look back, the very first, the very first verses was Swiss versus Just Blades. You remember yeah. that about yeah. five I years ago? Yeah. I thought it was no. that was five. Was, yeah. Read that. Kanye before and Swiss, that. I thought. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. It was just and Swiss. Like in five studio, years right? ago, they was in the studio, yep. and they, he streamed it online. Right. And we were talking about it. He was talking too. to me. I was like, "Yeah, but y'all niggas mm -hmm. are playing records. Y'all did. I get that. Let's bring out the machines, my nigga. Make beats. Oh, wow. you want a beat battle? I mean, that's what he was saying in the beginning. Right. Like I was like, oh, that could be fun. Like, so, so you would prefer the beat battle type style of it? I mean, if it would be Kinda beat like a battle, a rap like what he does. Yeah, that type of vibe. Or you know, you just like I, I think it would be dope if it was like make a beat um, on the spot. And so who beat? beat well, battle? if niggas gave like, let's say it's me and you, right? Right. And let's say they gave you a crate with. 20 joints, they gave you the sampler of your choice, they gave you a keyboard, a simp shit, they gave me the same tools, Right. and then they said, you yeah. know, in 30, in 30 minutes, go, let's see what you come out with. Right. You come back in 30 minutes, Into it's like week. a chef shit. End of right. the week does that. Right. Who? EO, EO Dub, End of the week, yes. Yes, they do that online right Shout now. Shout out to EO Dub. No, no, EO Dub does it right now. But I would like, never literally do any now. of that shit, though. Well, Jesus Christ. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you said, you said, you said it down before you even asked. <laughs> you just explained the entire thing, ran down the criteria, damn near nah, set you know up what? the rules. Don't and be said, nah, I'm not doing none of that bullshit. But seriously, though, know, that would be more interesting to me than just playing my catalog and right. saying song for song on the catalog although i will say that fucking i love with fucking obviously locks dip set Lock that shit was just a, that was so well needed I, because it it was the closest vibe to a new york vibe <laughs> that we seen in a, in a minute yes and, the, and i just love the and fact MC. that oh, mc mc that's what we, we was missing. i also love the camaraderie oh, you know yeah, how it is yeah, with yeah, you know yeah. That shit, nigga, you could be like, yo, nigga, what the fuck is this shit you got? You know, all that crazy <laughs> right, shit. Right. They brought it back. Love it, all it of that. Love. You know what I'm saying? To see that. Competition you know what I'm saying? without malice. Well, Talk well, about it all well, now. I gotta wonder. Because they, they say with versus, um, everyone's streams goes up like 200%. Okay. So does that encourage the people who watch the numbers to find more artists like this? It should. But I think that they, um, I think that it's going to, it's going to rear its head anyway. Why? Because it's such a discovery. What Tim and Swiss is doing is amazing. Yeah. Because people get to discover shit that they probably, I mean, they had an Ozzy Brothers joint. They had an Earth, Wind, and Fire. Mm -hmm. They had, you know, right. then they had the Brandy joint. Right. 
Like it was so good. I, 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 but they I, shed they shed in light. They shed in light on the older rappers. They waking up the old the younger but, rappers. But not just the older rappers, the but it, right. it's it's making right. this stuff. They bringing them Classic. back to life. It's making it timeless, right? Yeah. Rather than making it old. But they introducing you know the mean? younger generation to it because a lot of these younger generation people don't even know. Oh, yeah, you hear the locks people. bumping all know. around the streets right. now. Son. Yeah, it's crazy. Right. Yeah, yo, I love, love it. Oh shit! Okay. You, yeah, right. Yeah. It, it's like oh, we here now. the studio again. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's tough. Yeah. It's tough. He's ready. He's ready. It's like oh, we here now. Yeah. Really? We back. Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. Cool. You like you Let's like go. to think. The suits are not gonna. The suits probably won't go in that direction because you're, oh, you're disrupting. I'm tired of talking oh, about this fucking suit. The suit. Do you want me? Yeah. You want me to lie? He, asked, <laughs> he, he asked the question. <laughs> wait, wait. Which one of y'all <laughs> asked the question? Niggas. Do you think it's gonna go back to that now that? Look, if it's if it's really about the numbers, you cannot deny the amount of attention that is getting. That is getting. Factory and settings. It is not the lows. No, not. Fa- factory settings. You're just disrupting the formula that I gave you earlier. You're now making it so that they have to go find the Jadakiss level talent. Boom, 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 boom. That's gonna be a problem. Like that that that's a difficult well, they, thing but, to the, do. Okay. You're not gonna be able to find it, try. but but what but, but fuck thinking from their side. Yeah. It's things from our side. <laughs> our side is this. Our, our, right. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. Right. Hold on. Right. 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 Settle, settle down. Settle wait, down. no, no, yeah. stop. I, it's a, I'm, a, I'm a fellow Aries. I got this. Settle down. Settle down. <laughs> I'm, I'm no, right but, here. But, with you. Settle down. But our side present, right? is think about how fertile the sound, the, the soil is going to be mm-hmm. for the next few years. The crop, the crop. This was a great season. The crop that's coming. The pandemic. <laughs> from now to the next, I guarantee you, five years is going to be because am, of diversity. I am I actively, I am actively moving in that direction and have been for the past three years. I am actively moving in that direction with with the clients that I have and the. He asked me who I listen to. I am actively moving Good. in that direction. Yeah. I, I'm looking to very much create a foothold for what we know to be actual talent moving in this business despite what the numbers may lead you to believe and algorithms may lead you to believe i'm actively moving in that direction and the people who you see me next to over the next four or five years like you said the people who you see me standing next to will be elite level talent mm-hmm. can't wait bro. watch me i, I got do it, it. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but I gotta ask, um, when you heard Ja Rule versus Fat Joe mm-hmm. was announced, right? Do you pick sides ahead of no. time? Do you say no? Nah, I think I, this I person is gonna take it because I, I I know I know them. These guys are my friends. Too. Just because you know, right? Them. You know what I'm saying? Right. Just because you know, them. you can't take a side. Come on now, just because nah, you nah, know nah. them. Sometimes you gotta but be. You, but you know what? But I, I will say this: when yeah. I first can't heard when I when I first heard that. Uh-huh. I just thought that the, <laughs> the the pairing was a little off. off. You know, I didn't I didn't see that. That didn't make sense. I didn't see side? that combo. Not uh, just them two together. I just that just don't didn't fit to me. Right. You know, obviously. I think that Fat Joe ja, just wanted to bring ja him out. Ja Rule I, I mean, yeah. you know, fifty. I felt like Fat Joe yeah. just wanted to bring Ja Rule back to life. That was a big part of it. You mm. know what I mean? But he's been um, gone for so long. Well, he was also oh. being ducked. Mm-hmm. Like people, Nigga, they, people, they, they, people scared of him who? because yeah. his catalog is crazy. People were ducking who? Rule. Ja Rule, oh, ja Rule. Catalog, his catalog yeah. is just crazy. They, him, he had a people stretch. People ducking Bus. Bus is the most. Du- I, I feel like a broken record up here. Bus is the most duck versus artist. Mm-hmm. Pit, like they just don't want to do it. Who do you think would be a good versus for Busta? I said Eminem. We both said Eminem. I don't know. I mean, I just I, I tell y'all. I, I I look at the verses and shit uh, mm-hmm. here and there, but I don't be checking it until niggas hit me like, yo, this is gonna be on. So I'm not that invested, but I think Busta, Busta, but yeah, but I guess Busta Eminem or Busta like, um, what's the? I think Busta Ludacris would be a good one too. Mm-hmm. Ludo already did. He already did one with Nelly. That's right. So it's like, and that's another thing. Are we gonna see like people? Come I said, back. I said, not, I said not Busta until, Missy. It's kind of tough. Busta to Missy. Yeah. That not would until, be crazy. Not but they're not it. verses. Why would I see? I know they're not hit. going verses, it, but it's, it's just they're like they're playing their 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 catalog. They both got a dope catalog, so, and they got the same so type of sound. It sounds like you want right smoke. Real, yeah, you want smoke. 
You want smoke. I mean, it's it's like you want smoke. entertain me, <laughs> man. Right? Right? Entertain me. Like battle rap. Right. Right. Yes, yes. Like yes, battle rap. <laughs> like battle rap. I want to see that. <laughs> yeah. That's that's, that, that's the that's what that's the shit I'm from. See, that's the shit I'm from. Like I'm serious. Like would you, yeah. would you make it a, a real battle? I mean, I'm not. Come on. I mean, I did all that. I know, but what you do? <laughs> He's still, looking at me do like. You still do it? Yeah. You still do a lot of things. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, V. I mean, come on, man. It's like if it if it if, if it ain't never crossed your mind. I mean, it, if, it, if, if 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 if. If if something happened, I mean, I never really had to deal with shit like that. After I my after I got on, and my first or the first shit went what it was, we just was yeah. with some other here. shit. Right. But I don't know what what's gonna happen tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? But that's I cut my teeth there. So if niggas, you know, Come say on, something yeah. on the record and mm-hmm. it's. And if it makes if it makes me laugh, I'll probably look at that as something to some like like something interesting. Right, like the MC Hammer shit. joint. Well, yeah, that 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 I didn't really pay too much mind. But to. you responded. I did. It was how did I respond? I think it was. Uh, it's not. It was the. I can't even remember. Me neither. Um, but I, I do remember his his. This was, um, you couldn't flow if you was a river. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> that was that was MC Hammer. He said that I think his his diss to you was you couldn't flow if he, he was a rebel. I remember him dissing Red Man. I remember he dissed Red Man. He, MC Hammer used to diss a lot of people. He start he started he the whole slick thing. Rick. He dissed the. Uh, he he dissed, was going he on. He said when it comes to straight up rocking, I'm second to none. Whether LL get fresh crew or DJ run, so he dissed. Hammer. Oh, you got that memorized. Oh, yeah. I remember when somebody took a shot. That's Hammer don't hurt him, right? Uh, yeah. Let's get it started. Let's get it started. Yeah, I know some MC Hammer. Yeah, let's get it started. Man. I remember when somebody took a shot. I've always been, when somebody got brave enough to take, and then Red Man dissed him in a skit. He didn't diss him on wax. He dissed him in a skit. I got to say, though. Shit, his mom ain't him, it, it seemed like everybody was teeing off on him, though. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It seemed like everybody was teeing off on him. Because he That's probably like, why he had to do that. He looked like the first sellout we ever had. No, 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 no. Realistically, I'm... See, that, 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 see, that, was, see that, and that, 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 was so scared. those kind of conversations was How the reason why I said, was the reason why I said that, because I felt like, he's I, an MC, stop right. calling yeah. him that, man. I, right. No, no. Everybody is putting, like, that's not I, him. I said, I said uh, it, uh, I said it the way I said it for a reason. He looked like the first sellout we ever had. And when nobody was seeing it before, when you weren't seeing commercials, when you weren't seeing rappers in commercials and Pepsi and car commercials, it looked like selling out. So they jumped on him as they would. Right. Is it? I, I guess Without having a conversation would with the, him and, that, and knowing where his mom was at. That would be the equivalent of all the Illuminati talk around Jay-Z then. He was also employing black people left, right, and center. Like so much of his money went into putting money into the hands of black people. So is that really a sellout now? No. If he's taking corporate money... And feeding people now was he dumbing down his art? Well, you no, you can't say dumbing down because that's like saying uh, Busy B was dumbing down his shit. No, that's that's the music he made. Hammer Period. made that music. Yeah. and actually, my mother, if it wasn't for MC Hammer, she would have never probably listened to hip hop. It was the MC Hammers that made her take a whole different perspective on what this is. You right. know, they thought it was a bunch of noise until they heard MC Hammer. It was like the gospel. That was next to the gospel tape. She had MC Hammer mixed in the mix, you know? So that, he opened up a Hammer, whole different Hammer, door. Touch if it, ha- yeah. ha- 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 MC Hammer's career, his artistry. Can't touch that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, Not, exactly. Yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. No, I was just saying his career, his artistry is a necessary pillar to hip hop. Cause what he, Absolutely. his shows was crazy. He knew how to make great records. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He 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 helped, you know, widen the doors that were already open from what running the guys did, right. and take it to an, a whole nother another level. level. Hell of a so I think people need to like give him his props. Oh, we give we give him his flowers. Yeah, I mean, now. yeah, absolutely. You know, because he's a king. You know what I'm saying? I right. I just understand why the conflict 
went the way it went in the beginning. I remember him taking the shot. I remember in a, in a sea of lyricism, his lyrics seemed to be a little more straightforward, metaphor-wise. They weren't really, there wasn't a lot of tricks, not a lot of lyrical tricks to it. Mm. It was very glitzy, very glamoury. So I could understand why in the days of scenario and and you know tribe called quet and all this other stuff why somebody would look at these this dude doing all these commercials and say oh, okay he's selling out and then jump on him but was he though you know what i'm saying like was he really like if you take you talk to people from oakland where he's from they'll tell you he's official tissue like he from is, the soil right. yeah. and he spent that money employing people like left right and center right so yeah. like I, that's i guess because hip-hop started from such a street level. Right. To see something dressed up. Right. You know what I mean? You kinda, they, and you they approached like, it like this that. This isn't. This, Hammers you know, for the hood, though. That, yeah. That's the other that's thing. What I'm saying. That's the other thing. It's, it's kind of like hood. the first time I saw you in a fur. <laughs> I was like, it's Q-tip. Yeah, right, 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 right. You know what I mean? You but know what I'm saying? It, it's, it's, do we hinder, uh, well, not hinder, but do we kind of judge successful people? more than we judge everyone else. Yeah, because successful people and people of note are in our faces a lot more these days. Mm -hmm. We can't escape them. We having a dinner, having a dinner with wifey, the phone go off, you see somebody committed suicide, somebody died on your phone. You put the phone down, you're talking with wifey, somebody sends you a meme or something of some celebrity. Like media is just engulfing us all. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So I think because of that, <clears throat> we have more of a, a heightened sense of, of, of awareness around um, people of note movements and activities and stuff, more than we should. Like the context of somebody's life, of which I think has no serious uh, connection uh, to what somebody is as an artist, which you know, the context seems to be more revved up and more hyped than what the, the artist is. Right. You know, if you look at Kanye, for instance, for whatever anybody mm. wants to say about him, the dude is a, is a, is a, is a game-changing artist. Yeah. So he's putting out his music, but then unfortunately, you know, for him, his, his, he's such a celebrity and a notable that all of the context around his life it rivals his music and in some cases eclipses his music. his music. And um, that's why when you, I, I, like I, I really do interviews, my, you my nigga, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We did a joint together, gave you my word as a man and I'm coming through to do that and I'm enjoying it, you know what I'm saying? Right. After this, it's a rap and I'm not doing it, you know what I mean? Cause I, I have to, and I'm just keeping it a bean, you know what I'm saying? Like. You have to be able to Hold back. still, well, you have to keep yourself intact, whatever that may be. For me, I, I'm always just a nigga that's, I'm low key, I'm just low, you know what I mean? I've always been, I had a joint called Mr. Incognito back in the days, you feel me? So I'm always LES. like, stay out the way. What? <laughs> when I saw you on LES. Oh yeah, oh, oh, yeah, 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 it's like, it's like what's this nigga like, doing over here? Like, <laughs> Almost didn't even rap, you're just walking, strolling. Yeah, People yeah. Because I I, I, I I like to live my life as such, you know what I'm saying? But um Did you ever feel like you were getting to that point? Um, it was like, whoa, 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 I gotta back up. Oh uh, yeah, sure, man. I mean think I think we all get to that point where, you know, you you feel like that your involvement in the business gets a little sticky and you, you need to, you know, take those time back and, and fall back, you know what I'm saying? Um, certainly, and I, 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 I enjoy that. It, it helps keeps me grounded, you know what I mean? Right. I could have very easily been one of them dudes who just like nonstop, go, 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 always in front, always having to be out and da, 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 da. and then you lose that sense of yourself, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna, challenge or subjugate anything, my, my happiness for anything, or my joy for anything. Was you know that around I mean? the Vibrant Thing era? What? 
when it started to get out of control. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just like before that, you know what I mean? Oh. Like I feel like, and it, it's always been pockets, you know, when you, especially when you put something out and it's happy, you know, it hits and shit, you go on the road, you have to move around, you living out of a suitcase, you from this city, this country, nonstop, not eating, just moving and working on stage every night and shit. Mm. It could be a lot. It could be a strain on you, on, on you, you know what I mean? Physically, mentally, spiritually. I mean, as far as like the celebrity aspect of your life was concerned, I would figure that. Yeah, I've never be. been like I don't, I don't, I never carry myself like that. You know what I mean? Right. So I'm not like, I ain't pressed. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because I'm, I'm, I, it's, it's the long game for me. As it has. It's not been. short ball. You know what I'm saying? No way. So. He got me in trouble at the source. I lost like the sickest bet ever. How? Oh yeah. What? What? Always got to shake somebody's oh, hand. Oh, you made I, I, the quotable. Oh. No, you, you made the quotable. I just remember that. Oh. The source, hip-hop oh. quotable. <laughs> I used to, you know, those days when you used to oh, grab yeah. the source. Yeah. Who's on the cover? Who made the quotable? Who made that the quotable? The next thing. Oh, right. Salute. Appreciate Salute. That. Salute. Boy. Word. Word. How'd I get you in trouble? Oh, man. Um, I was the resident backpacker at the source. Like, literally, I was, <laughs> I was rapping in watching the Square Park, watching the Cyphers. That was me all day. Yeah. And um, there was an argument going back and forth about the kind of covers we were doing and who was on the cover and how it seemed like we weren't giving New York rappers no love and we weren't covering lyricism and X, Y, Z, A, B, and C. And of course, me being who I was, I was on the forefront of that argument. Anytime somebody wanted to talk about lyrics, they go ask me. And I was like, kind of like an intern with perks back then. Like I, I really wasn't high up on the food chain. But I used to run my mouth because I thought I was waving the flag. And they said, I don't know whether this was because of the argument that we kept having or it was just happening anyway. But they used to do double covers for like the same episode. They would do this, a double cover. Right. And they, this time they did a double cover. It was on one cover was supposed to represent like pure lyricism. It was most deaf. Black Thought and Pharrell Monch. I remember that cover. It was the summer where Mrs. Fat Booty came out and, and Simon Says came out. Like they put all three of them on one cover. Right. And then they put Q-Tip on the other cover with the fur and like with the afro blown out, like no shirt. <laughs> and he was supposed to represent the other side. And they put them covers out. And when I tell you the sales were embarrassing, for us, like for us as in like the guys who what? thought this super lyrical cover was going to be the one and all the hip hop fans was going to stand up and buy this cover what? and you know it was going to be a statement and they're representing and look and see if you if you build it they will come if you give it to them they'll actually buy it man that Q-tip cover slaughtered <laughs> <laughs> everything else moving wow. like that shit sold so many copies they were returning the other ones, other ones, like wow. the newsstands were sending the other covers back. I lost I lost all credibility in the office that day. Sorry about that. Yeah, you, <laughs> you fucking should be. I was on like, I was on back room. <laughs> like I was on back room duty for like, for like three months after that. Like I was just on like the worst duty, the worst detail in the source ever off the strength of losing <laughs> that bet. And I couldn't say shit to no, anytime I opened my mouth, they was like, so you, what, what you want, another double cover? <laughs> <laughs> it just had to keep it moving. All his the source. Form. How did your name come about? It was another instance of, yeah. It was another instance of, of women. <laughs> you like getting their air, huh? That's not a topic that I can't talk about. What? That's not a topic I can't talk about. Oh, you can talk about that. Oh, but but I mean, let's get it. MC Love, you talk about your No, let me nah, nah, nah. <laughs> nah, but, um, It was, you know, um, this thing, so Af Africa in school, because I used to have a crazy high top. My shit was like. He was like, nigga, you look like a Q-tip, nigga, dirty Q-tip, nigga. Not a dirty Q-tip. He was like, you look like a Q-tip, a dirty Q-tip. He would call me Q-tip. He would say, look at Q-tip, like in school. Right. But the chicks would be like, Q-tip. 
You know what I mean? So I was You're like, like, this is working. Girls is cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, I like this. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Again, like, I'm, I, I, I'm just one for, um, uh, you know, like the, the low end theory, the, the cover of it is a black woman painted, red, black, and green, nude. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I've, I view hip hop like, it's, it's, it's nuanced. This is definitely rough, rugged, and raw, and all that shit, but it's also nuanced. Right. And it's not just black and white, it's gray. You mm -hmm. see what I mean? So, um, I'm one who, uh, who, who if, 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 if a woman is like, yo, I kind of like that. I'm like, what? What's wrong with Why? it? Why? Um, bong. <laughs> yeah. Bong. Bong. Um, bong. Yeah. What what where does that come from? Where does that come from? Yeah, I don't know. You know Was you saying? one of them guys in school? That, like what? Mm -hmm. Q tip. Yeah, just let me put the tip in. You know what <laughs> 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 I, 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 you know, I was all right. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> um. Wait, you wait, know. you ain't catch that? Look, yeah, I was like, right. Those are the words of a killer, <laughs> yeah. bro. Yeah, no, 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 no
devise like three rounds with three or four minutes and go off the script in case to keep extra for a clip yeah. for a nigga. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Wow. That's hard. That takes right. a degree of imagination and love. You got to love it first. Not, right, 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 right. You got to fucking love it and you got to have love around you to support you to do what you do. That's a fact. And you got to fucking put that time in and that work. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, And you got to kill. You're mm -hmm. on that stage, and there's, there's no music playing. It's all eyes on you. You're the whole band. That's some other shit. And if you go, <laughs> if you go, once you hit that 12 bar mark where nobody's reacting, you're in the danger zone. You go wow. another four, you're getting booed. You're getting booed. You feel it. So you Have you ever been him. in a position where you had to go off the cuff where you felt like you had to... You were, you was, it, was it was starting to wane, and you knew that the next eight that you had coming up was more in that same vein. You had to like flip it. Yes. Versus T Rex. Oh, okay. The beginning bars. Mm -hmm. I cut, I cut some of it short. Wow. I felt like a, during the pace of the battle, I was like, like this ain't hitting. Right. The beginning of my third, I got more of this. Cut it short. Right, right, right. So there was like a whole gap in between the, you the same thing on Buffy's back. Mm -hmm. And I went back and I went into this matchup, don't make sense, mm -hmm. and finished that up. I cut like 12 bars out mm -hmm. right there on the stage. Being able to I edit like I, that. I, I could not, yeah, yeah. That, that's some other shit. That's crazy. With no <laughs> music. <laughs> See, right. we as, uh, you, some, you know, we got music as a support mm -hmm. in that way. Mm -hmm. The music, the music comes from the musicality of what, how you doing your shit. You know what right. I mean? The That's whole the whole shit. I think you could do it. I, I, I'm not just gonna jump in. I respect it too much. You know, I'd, I'd have to just, if I was to, I would never do it, but I would just <laughs> play in the ground. Like, I would, I think he you nigga try to lie me up. You nigga try to lie me up. No, I try to lie me up. No, I try to lie me up. No, I try to lie me up. I saw a little spark in your eye. It was like you walk in and then he jumped back I've off. seen it before. <laughs> Method Man, Nikki. Yeah, I've seen that spark before. Yeah, yeah you know, I mean, I, I, look, I mean, Nikki dude. Jam, he, he loves battle rap so much. Mm -hmm. He jumped in. Yeah, but I mean, shit. Did you hear that Lupe shit with yeah. Ross? What you, I mean. I mean with um, 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 uh, uh, Royce. Uh, Royce. Yeah. I love them both. Mm -hmm. I love them both. I, I, it's just, what happened? They was doing a podcast together, and then they just egos, egos, man. You know, when one when one guy just keeps acting like he's that much better, or just insinuating I'm on a higher level, eventually you gonna be like, "What's up? You want to rap?" Mm. And that's where it went. Oh, that's where it went. Mm. Shout out to Royce, shout out to Lupe. Love them both. Um, but that that is kind of the first time we got to see, like. Yeah, that was. For me, I was right in the middle, like, yes, yes. Right, right. Yes, the friend, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, Royce <laughs> right. is all mad on Instagram. I'm like, yo, bro. But did they piece it out? <laughs> um I think it's kind of stalemated out. Yeah, they, 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 it's still kind of like. I hope they piece it out. Further. I hope they piece it out. But Absolutely. you listen to rappers. Rap about killing rappers, mm -hmm. and then when it's the occasion, you're like, "Kill rappers, time to kill." Mm -hmm. There you go, you got one. It's like once you once you get in a battle, one. I feel like once you have a battle at any source as an MC, mm -hmm. it don't ever leave you. It's the, it's always there. It may right. be dormant. But that gene is always there. Oh, the, the ability to, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're on hiatus, but. He keeps dropping hits. <laughs> he just keeps dropping I'm, hits. Something's what? gonna happen. Something's gonna happen. Nothing's gonna happen. Don't call that. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's gonna happen. He, he get um, ready, walk through the door, I'm and then pull the shot. <laughs> I'm gonna walk my door. But, uh, but amongst the, the conscious rappers, who would you say, dead or alive, would have been the most dangerous to battle. I got my vote. Got my vote. I mean, March is 
That wasn't he's who a, I was thinking. He's an issue. Yeah. That wasn't who I was thinking, though. I kind of feel, rest in peace, I feel like Fife. Fife is a... Yo, let me what tell you something man. about him. Off the top... Leave him I've never seen nothing like it, my nigga. Mm. We used to do some shit on stage where we go off the top at each other, certain things. We, like, we had this whole thing like, yo, nigga, fuck you, nigga. I'm, so what you want to do, nigga? You remember those moves, right? right. And we be going... Fuck, I'll be having that nigga. He'll come back the next night. Bong. I had a nigga, he'll come back two nights. Bong, bong. <laughs> I, then the third night, bong. Then the fourth night, bong. Uh, and I'll like, come back and this. I'll be bong, bong. <laughs> then I'll hit him with a like, bong, bong, bong. Then he'll come back and just go six on me, like, bong. And we be laughing about the shit. Yeah. Wow. But just always like every that, night it was that nigga material. off the top of his head. Yeah. I ain't see shit like it. The only shit that I seen like it off the top, like um, what was it? Uh, Super Nat from back in the day, mm. or or, 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 or Mad Skill from back in the day. Okay. Like he was that like that off the top. Juice. Mm. Okay. I was thinking Common. Common is my um, first thought was Common. Most is most is my pick. Most is nuts. Mm. Andre. I mean, different era though. No, but you said. No, no, no. You're, you're, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Y'all right. ready to get controversial? Mm-hmm. Who? Tupac. As a conscious? I was listening to some of his music the other mm-hmm. day and I said, He's definitely why substantive. Why is he not in this category? Because he talked about. He, he talked about. Yeah, exactly. Nah, it, it's it's. We talked about love a lot. Yeah, yeah. You know, it was, love it was, uplifting the people. Uplifting. What, what threw him out of that cat? Not threw him out of that category. But why people don't think about him in that way is more along the lines of the best way to describe it. It's 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 it was his duality, right? He always seemed to be coming from a certain direction that we weren't expecting conscious rappers to come from. However, that was kind of our mistake. We really should have, because it's not like, it's not like KRS-One and the name of his crew wasn't beat down, right. beat down Bo- posse, that, yeah. right? And it's not like Public beat Enemy wasn't talking about storming prisons and taking prisoners. So in that respect, we probably should have allowed Tupac the Grace to be in that space as well. But Pac talked about a lot of, when, when he said thug shit, even though niggas stood for never ignorant getting goals accomplished, nine times out of 10 when he talked, we took it as from the perspective of him versus another black man. It was street shit. Hmm. He talked more street shit. Show how versatile he was. I said the duality that's of crazy. it. Like, that's what I'm saying. It was a duality hmm. to him that the other side of him kind of right. walked him away from the conscious crowd. It's not that right. he wasn't, I hate mm. using the word woke, but he was, if, if they were, if, if the soul Quarians and, and native tongues were like the pan-Africanism of hip hop, then Pac was like the Black Panthers. You think what I mean? Like there were, there were guns involved right. in his talk. There were always guns. Public he was, enemy. He was on his Fred Hampton, right. And P.E. probably would have been able to go between both, but he was definitely on his guns first. Tattoos first, bandanas first, niggas with rags first. Like, we gonna do this, and then after that, whatever, whatever, but the guns is here. The, right. the, the soldiers are, are over here. We're not gonna politic it out. Nah, put your hands, we gonna fight, mm. and we gonna shoot. And I'm gonna I'm a bust, and I'm a, I know where I'm shooting at. I got two vests on, aim at my chest. I hope you do. I'll be making straight dome calls. That was a, that's a bar. So... I think that's maybe the only reason he wasn't seen as a conscious rapper, so to speak. Who's the closest thing to him? Well, if we're going off right of first impressions, Brenda's got a baby. Right. That doesn't make you a conscious rapper, though. No, Holla If You Hear Me was a great one. Holla that if don't the, make you a conscious rapper. It, it, but but speaking, speaking on, like, we're talking about the whole video was aimed at police violence there was a there was a there was a scene in one of those videos we said will i quit will i quit they claim that i'm violent but still i kick and i'll never forget that part in the video because he had a cop's 
hat on his finger. That's and he was song. twirling that shit around. They claim Being that I'm violent, you know what I mean? But his whole thing was about breaking the kid out of the back song. of a cop car. But anybody can make a conscious song or a conscious video. To consider yourself a conscious artist, that means that your whole body of work is Conscience. 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 And he wasn't I that, that, that. Absolutely, yeah. I think. So. Well, no, no, I'm not even sure if that's true because. Wait a minute. We gave, we gave <laughs> Tribe. We gave Tribe grace to talk about things that weren't necessarily but it's, political that's not a part of evolution. Right. Right. That's not a part of like evolution. This is, no, this, is no, this is good stuff now. <laughs> if we want to get to it, because I grew up under him. When he made that song you just said. Vibrant thing? We had a problem with it. We was like. What the hell are you doing, dude? Right, right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, we looked at you like, yo, what, are, what are you doing, dude? Did you, we did you feel we, that? Hold on, hold on a second. Did you feel that when you, <laughs> when you went solo? Yeah, I mean, I, I, after. I, I felt it after I heard niggas say this shit. <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm saying? I'm just being real with it. <laughs> but honestly, it's like. That record that was did really well for me. It was platinum, all that yeah. shit, and mm -hmm. plaqued out. And and now I have people that come back. The same people, a couple of people have said, "Yo, my bad. I know I, I jumped bad when we like 15 years ago, bro. I was listening to that shit the other day. Yo, that shit is no, it's that it's, shit is it's, all right. Bro. Yeah. Yeah. That shit is but, not, it, it, <laughs> was, got it that. was a change. I've got from, that. That was 100 percent you though, right? That ain't have nothing to do with the label, right? No. That was just yeah, like a lot of people. that because the group had broken up at that point. So I was like, release, fuck it. And then after that, I stopped and then I just studied music theory. Um, I studied art, um, history. I took up painting and all that shit. I, Learn how to play piano, drums, and bass, that's why all you, that your shit. level in the mm -hmm. conscious maintained because we saw you stop. We saw. I'm sorry. We saw you stop. We saw it. Didn't, yeah, I stopped. You didn't no, keep well, your after career that, going no, but, like that. But they wanted another one from me. Mm -hmm. But you yeah, didn't. You know, you didn't turn you know, know what I mean? Artist. But I, but then, um, yeah. When Clive left, Arista went to Jay. You know, I received some not too not too good advice to kind of stay at Arista at the time. And I should have probably went. Clive was like, Kids have come over to Jay. I have a great artist, Alicia Keys. And I was mm. like, I think, you know, I'm gonna stay there. But um, it was, it was definitely heard those, what the fuck are you doing? And you know, all that shit's just funny. <laughs> it was, was there funny, anybody but, in particular that hit you up like, yo, what are you doing? Um, no, but you know, five. Fife, because we, we had split up and it was a bad time. He said, this dick is Maxwell. No, yeah. <laughs> he wasn't on your side with it, yeah. Yeah. I was like, Maxwell, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a bong on the stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's like, this Maxwell ass nigga. <laughs> Afro, like, fur coat. Well, low hanging fruit. I would imagine after splitting up. Mm. You wouldn't want to try to repeat the music that you that you made as a as a group. Mm -hmm. It was, I guess, you were trying to find a sound, a new sound. Yeah, <clears throat> I think um, I was I was more like interested in um, building something new, trying to do, build off of that, extend that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Make some. New shit, you know what I'm saying? Move on, 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 on to a different plane, and um, I, th I think I think I think we 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 wound up at a good, a pretty good place with the um, amplified album, and then was Renaissance album that came out some years after. I think that that, that um, we wound up in a in a good space, wow. and then um, just from seeing, I think some of the things that's helped keep the tribe shit going. Mm -hmm. Aside from God, you know what I'm saying? Like, we cannot denounce that, but just the fact that there was so many artists after that came from that. You know, whether mm -hmm. it be the Pharrells or the Our Futures or the Kanye's or the Lupe's or the. that kept the conversation going. They just went the to shit. feel of the tribe called Quest, but all they got left was this guy called West. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just like, we could, when I look back, 
I, I don't have any regrets. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I've, 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 um, I made millions, lost them, and made them again, and survived some wild shit, wild flights, wild fights. You know, wild relationships, all that shit, and I'm still here. Um, and um, I'm proud of it. You know, it's funny. I was talking the other night to uh, Lauren and Andre. On the same and line. We were stunt much. You know, just yeah. casual. <laughs> you know? yeah. I mean, what? No, 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 no. That's cool, cool, cool. It's cool. It's no, those are my. It's cool. People, I know. But no, we yeah, were yeah, talking. It's cool. it's cool. No, no, no. But yeah, we're just a Tuesday. You know, just regular Tuesdays. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but we were talking about, um, like what we were talking about earlier about age. Mm -hmm. And um, Lauren was like, you know, it's our, our duty and our, you know, as we move on to, to continue to create because the same way we left, um, inspiration for them when we were maybe some years younger, you want to show those same people who came up on you how it is to move into your years. Right. Mm. And then Andre was like, yo, it's funny you said that. I forget who artist he said. I think he said that, um, was it Doug? He said, it's funny you said that Doug said the same. No, Tyler said to me, I need you to put something out, Dre, because I need you to show me how to be fly at 50 or something like that. You know mm. what I mean? I think that's where we at now. Yeah, you know what you I mean? Know. And it's about embracing it. Yeah. You know? I'm um, not trying to be young. Well, you, you've but, grown. But, yeah. You've grown. It's, it's we grown. Of evolution. It's grown. Like, there's young, old, no. There's Ageism, age. we have no place for ageism. I can't stand it. Shit. I can't stand it's, it. It's horrible because every you would hope to get to 50. Right. Nice. Shouldn't you know that be I mean? like Facts. past the ambition? Shouldn't you want to keep going and and have it look a certain way? Like trying to keep hip hop young just feels like we, we're stagnating on purpose. It's, like and, it, and, it's so, on purpose. and it's so not who we are as people of color. At all. Right. It's not how we came up in our homes and our households, man. What kid did you this know didn't way, want to be say grown? Mm -hmm. Let me say yeah. something. It's not who we are. This is... This is a vibe, this sensibility that we feel in hip hop, this whole ism shit, the sexism, the ageism, all that shit. That's they shit. Mm -hmm. That's not our shit. Black don't crack. That's it. We don't, we never came up like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like when we was, when we was little pups, I remember looking at Soul Train, seeing niggas like full grown beards, like I'm 10, 12, and I'm seeing right. the, the whispers of some shit, mm -hmm. keep on loving me, doing all that shit. Yeah. Old niggas, like, in my mind, because I'm the young nigga looking at I'm like, yo, that's the shit. Right. We was in the hood. Marvin Gaye had the fucking sexual healing shit out. That shit was popping in the yeah. street, nigga. That shit was, right. that shit, nigga. That was shorties. like somebody dropped every beer of our camera when that shit came out. And we little niggas, and he's like the super duper OG. Right. And we was like, yo, we want to do that. car right now. You know what I mean? Crazy. But, um, I think, um, Hopefully, experience will will will, will continue to will, will continue to be the um, the guiding factor for us as artists, and um, because we're in hip hop, we're still in new territory. We've never been here. Yeah, before. never been here. That's that's what I was gonna say. This is a still this is still the active generation from the first generation until now. Mm -hmm. Nice. If we're talking about a birth of a child who was born in 1973, he or she would be, what, 40-something. Mm -hmm. So we're still talking about a, 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 a music culture that is still living out. It's like we haven't even gone through a um, hundred years, years to be able to say something is old and passe. Dig that. But the shit, go, time is like this. <laughs> That before you know it, a fucking the model with Drake and Wayne mm -hmm. seem like oh they ain't. right. You know what I mean? Mm. I was like 15 years so old, it's it, yeah, you well, know what I mean. Well, but we all are in first. That's kind of why I appreciate you know I mean? the verses so much because it helps dictate it, right? It helps notate or rather notate the time. Yeah, and the attention of it. 
Mm. It's drawing the same way you like uh, Marvin Gaye mm -hmm. because your parents right. like Marvin Gaye. Right. So now when these verses happen and you see the attention being drawn to it, there's kids that's like, what y'all watching? Hmm? Yo, I can't tell you how many um, 14, 15 year old fans we have. It's so crazy. Mm -hmm. Like I got people, you know, your family say, yo, say something to my little cousin, you love you. You on the phone with kids, really, no way. You know, all that yeah. crazy 14 year old shit yeah. today. And it's, it's ill, it's promising, man. And we all, and we all as artists, we are all one record away, one song away from continuing in that conversation. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's, it's never over for us. Like, you and I exist within a mighty fraternity, bro. It's like, there's a Mav Hoffa, there's a Q-Tip, there's a Miles Davis, there's a, a Lena Horne, a Josephine Baker, a Jimi Hendrix. Hendrix. You know, we have, we're in a fraternity, man. You know what I'm saying? So we have to wear it. With pride, and I think part of the conversation that my two friends and I were having the other day was just about encouraging each other to to recognize where we at to continue. Continue. You know what I mean? Continue. <laughs> I look forward to it. And when you battle, I'll be right there. Ah, I'm sure you will. I'll be right there. I'm sure you will. <laughs> Yo, salute, legend. Oh um, man, you are not just a huge influence, but a keystone, a, a a a piece that you yeah, a pillar. You you, it, it doesn't happen without you. Salute. Appreciate you, salute. Salute, salute, salute. bro, 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 King, bro, King. Oh, we out of here. Thank you, bro. Appreciate you, bro. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going um, call you about that battle. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, my man. Thank you, yes, man. This hot for trap, trap, and turn smack rapper. Only smack rapper that you know is smack rappers. Got bars, I can hang with the backpackers. Trap star, I don't hang with the backpackers. I'm in the hood with the work you heard. Making fiends leave earth, you heard. Got your baby mama thirst, you heard. Feel the flow, nigga, throw it in reverse. This the way you need to serve, you heard.